And a pleasant good afternoon live for the Great Plains Coliseum, site of the Comanche County Basketball Tournament in day number three, which will feature four girls games. And we'll start off with the India Homa and the Big Pasture Rangers, or Lady Rangers, going to go at it uh, today for the setup for the Great Plains Coliseum. Glad that you could join us. Caleb Sherum on camera, myself, Eric Sherum, going to uh, bringing you a full slate of basketball. It started off at 10 a.m. this morning with the Classic at Carl Albert. So it's the Titan Classic all day long with eight games. Then the Altus Short Grass Tournament, uh, the Chester Harrington uh, 50th anniversary that's been running all day. And now this one here uh, that we're proud to bring you live is the Rangers. Lady Rangers going to be in all red, India Homa in white. And the Lady Rangers are going to start off with the first opening drive. Going to actually, the bank is open, puts it right off the bank to get the first opening score for two to nothing. So it was an immediate put back and then a steal, puts back up high off the glass and then comes down with the rebound for the Lady Warriors. Randy Elmo. Just in the get-go of 7.23 in quarter number one. So it's the first opening three ball. It's uh, brought to you by... The Walters Co-op, 409 West Missouri and Walters. Phone 875 3344 Proud supporters of Walters Athletics. Puts in for the three to answer. So you answer points with points, and it's exactly what we see with a 3-2 to two contest. Get a little bit of help with the full court press for the Lady Rangers. Crosses the timeline. Going to go coast to coast, and then they get stripped out of bounds, and that's going to be last touched by India Homa. So big pasture with the turnover. Just underway here at a couple of minutes elapsed off of quarter number one, and it's a 3-2 score. India Homa with the opening three ball turnaround jumper. Hits the back iron, no good. Rebounded by India Homa. And quickly down the floor. Tries to go. Oh, and double teamed underneath. Uh, gets a little bit of congestion. It goes out of bounds, but last touched by the Rangers. So India Homa will inbounds from underneath. It looks for a little bit of help. I mean, that's deflected, and it goes out of bounds, but it's going to stay on this end. And we'll have our first substitutions coming in. Try to inbounds and lets that one sail. Back irons, no. Put back up, no good. And immediately with the third opportunity with the defensive boards. And we've got our turnover on that end of the court. It's going to go out. And India Homa will inbound. Still a 3-2 score with 5.49 left to go here in quarter number one. First of four games on the slate. Followed by Fletcher and Elgin, JV. In game number two, Walters will take on Geronimo at 7-10. And then in the late cap, it will be Chattanooga versus Sterling at 8-30. So only play on as the ball goes out. And big pasture. Tries the outlet. Goes baseline. Couple of dribbles. Let's that one air. Goes up off to nowhere into the hands of India Homa with the rebound. Bounce pass coming to the near side of the court. Back up. Oh, a nice little 
out of the way. Back iron's no good. Loose ball picked up by Big Pasture. Quickly down the floor. Still stays a 3-2 contest with 4.51 left to go here in quarter number one. What's that one sail? Back iron's no good. Loose ball picked up by Indiahoma with 4.40 left to go. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube and on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Phone and, of course, on Roku, Amazon, Fire, and Apple TV. Three ball out of the way, and that just gets stuck. And that's going to be a jump ball called. And they finally get that down underneath. We had to kind of use a little bit of throwing the ball. Another one. And so we're back to action. Take that trap with a double team, Indiahoma. Going to have to try to get across the timeline before the 10-second count, and does. 409, and almost a kickball, but loses it. Indiahoma can't come up with it, and that's going to be Lady Rangers' ball. So Big Pasture come up with the opportunity with 404 left to go here in quarter number one. So a jump ball is called. Loses that, just kind of goes right on the line and goes out of bounds. So last touch by Lady Rangers. So Indiahoma will inbounds from underneath their own goal. With a 1.32 lead with Indiahoma by one with 3.40 left to go here in the first quarter. Loose ball on the floor. Kind of avoids the jump ball and was able to get that. Lady Rangers on a stop and pop from outside. Hits the iron on one, two, and three and out. And Indiahoma comes right back down the floor quickly here on the near side. Little bounce pass. Tries to get that middle lane, though, within a three ball out of the way. That is from the collegiate range. We've always talked about the three colors on the this court. They've got an NBA, they've got a college, and they've got the high school. High school is right there at the top of the key, the black. And, and when you're a player, you have no clue. You just see a line and you just shoot. And so it kind of gets unfamiliar as it goes out of bounds, and Indiahoma will retain possession. Lady Rangers with a full court press. The final three minutes to go here in quarter number one. Loose ball, but picked up at the timeline. Goes baseline, runs out of real estate, and then throws that one right. Then that's get tipped up. They're going to be a foul there. So that'll be the first one. Little bend at the knees. And our Hillary Communications free throw misses the first opportunity. Second shot coming up. Up and hits the front iron. No good. Rebounded by Big Pasture and quickly down the floor as we have 2.45 left to go here in the first quarter. Glad you could join us. 
for an afternoon of full slate basketball. We talked about the Alta Short Grass Tournament going on all day today, featuring Frederick, who was in this county tournament, moved over the, to that tournament. I think this is going to be the last, from what I heard, for the 50th annual Alta Short Grass Tournament. And then the Titan Classic, Carl Albert, with eight games slated today, with 16 teams in action, eight girls, eight boys. And that is on the network, too. So if you want plenty of basketball, you've got it. Likes that one go in, and Indiana gets another score to extend their lead now, 5-2. to two. Looks for a little bit of help. Going to let that one drive. And she's going to get fouled, and she's going to go to the line shooting, too. Hester is going to go to the free throw line. No good for the first. And we've got another whistle. Going to take it out the inside from the near court. And a whistle. that one sailor out double team strip and that's going to be a jump ball called and the possession arrow will remain this end of the floor and try to inbounds One thirteen remain in quarter number one. Going to slow that one down just a bit. Look for a little bit of help. Down underneath, and then that's going to be up off the glass for two for Big Pasture. And they were able to tie this one up now with five to five. Waits for the defender to go pass, rattles in and out. Rebound, big pasture with 42 seconds remaining. And they're going to be sailed out of bounds. And we got some substitutions coming in. I'm going to cross the timeline and get a little bit of help as we're all tied up at five apiece. Turn around. No good as it rolls off the glass, off the rim, into the hands of the Lady Rangers. Big pasture crosses the timeline, looks top of the key. Nice little dish underneath, and then a wide open at the charity stripe. Hits the back iron, no good. A loose ball, and there is a whistle on the floor and a foul with the push. It's Pat, official there on the floor, gets that indication. All tied up at five apiece with 13 seconds remaining here, and that's going to be a travel call. So Indiana takes the extra step, and the final 10 seconds will belong to Big Pasture. And wait for down to two, down to one, and that's going to go out of bounds. And that's going to end quarter number one.
So we'll be back with the second quarter. As we're all tied up at five apiece. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, but I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know I'm an American Airman kicking your butt. I'm General CQ Brown Jr. Come join us. Back to action here from the Great Plains Coliseum, and a put back up off the glass for Big Pasture. Takes the first lead of the night. Take that back. I think they scored the opening two, and then Indy Homa hit a three. That's right. So now it's 7 to 5. It was 7 35. Welcome into quarter number two. It's brought to you by Arvis Bank. Arbest is committed to the communities they serve, providing a full range of financial services to both the individuals and businesses. Manage your accounts anywhere from online and mobile banking. Member FDIC, it is Arbest Bank. So as they get that opening shot, right after that quick timeout, or I mean at the end of the quarter, and we're back to all tied up a piece at 7, with 7.09 left to go. And there is a whistle. We're going to go to the line shooting, too. This goes in. And the second one. A little shy. So it'll move and in there for the two. And a timeout is called, so we'll keep it here. Got... Uh, 6.54 and more. A little bit going on with Big Pasture. They finally get some back-to-back -back points, and India Homa calls timeout. Make it 10-7. It's a quick 30-second timeout. I want to thank our fine sponsors to make this possible, including First Baptist Church of Fletcher, Brock's Industries, Bridges Auction, Walters Bank and Trust, First Baptist Church of Walters, and Heritage Pharmacy. Proud supporters of the Comanche County Basketball Tournament. We'll let that one sail around. Hester gets two, and Big Pasture extends their largest lead of the ball game. To add another two, and Indiahoma almost looks for the steal. Big Pasture now 12 to 7, with 6.27 left to go in quarter number two. It's that loose around, and
Little bounce pass. And that's going to be stolen away by Big Pasture. Taking advantage of some turnovers. and Opportunity to let that one fly for a three ball. Looked no good off the mark. Travel is called. So India Homa to inbounds. It's going to be over to Carter. Gets a little bit of help from Burgess. And the junior looks for a little bit of help. Bounce pass over to Johnson. Ona Johnson. And that's going to be tipped and then out of bounds. And it's going to be last touched by India Homa. So Rangers will have another opportunity. Going to hesitate and wait. Backs out a little bit. Finds the open man for the wide out range, and that's just going to be an air ball. It's going to fall out of bounds, and that's going to be into the hands of India Homa, so they'll take over. Get a little bit of. Ball handling, almost stripped, and then, yes, it is stolen as the loose ball on the floor by Big Pasture. And the Lady Rangers take advantage of the steal, puts it up high off the glass, no good. Rebounded into Yahoma. Just trying to put a little run together. It's going to go out of bounds, and Big India Homa is going to retain possession. Checking into the ball game will be Alvarado, a freshman, big pasture. They've got a lot of freshmen on this squad. And they go up in an opportunity. Quickly down the floor now is Big Pasture. Kind of set this one up. I'm going to pass around the perimeter. Back up top is Green. Comes back down to low side to Hester. Let's that one fly. Misses the mark on the back iron. Still a 12-7 contest as India Homa with Katie Colley. Oh, finds the open shooter in the lane for Burgess. Doesn't come down, but now we got a foul called. And we'll go to the line shooting two. No, take that back. It's not a shooting foul. It's on number 24. So we have India Homa with three fouls and Big Pasture with four. Got 3.29 left to go here in the second quarter. So Green is going to play a little catch with Hester. Back and forth they go. Looks for the low post down there for Hester, who kind of found her way sneaking down there. Off the mark and into the hands of Katie Colley, the junior. For India Homa, looks for the little pass and then looks for a little bit of help. Deflected momentarily by Big Pasture and then stolen all the way for Hester. Puts it up, no good, but the putback on the rebound is good for two. So 
So now big pass here by double the point lead with 14 to seven, their largest tonight by seven. That ball goes out of bounds and into the hands of Janie Green, the senior, cross midcourt with 225 left to go before the half. Your Arbus Bank second quarter. Member FDIC committed to the communities they serve, providing a full range of financial services to both your individual needs and business needs. Our best bank. They are the bank for the Oklahoma Sports Network. And that bank is open. Goes up off the glass for two for Green. And the big pasture lead continues. Kind of a stall drought for India Homa. And Puts that one, airs that back off the glass. No good. With 149 left to go. Off the NBA range for a three. And no good. Quickly down the floor as she will toss back over to Carter. Carter back over on the left wing. Hands off to Cotty Colley, she'll get over to Ona Carter. Three ball all the way, misses the mark. Big pass here with the rebound with 113 left to go. Up 16 to seven, tries to go coast to coast. She'll get engaged as Janie Green goes straight to go to the free throw line. They're saying Johnson will go to the free throw line and I, I got her We have a, must have a jersey change, so I apologize as you're. Charity Stripe by Hillary Communications, providing ultra-fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone services to thousands of customers across Oklahoma. Call 580-529-5000. And gets them both. Just gets both of those free throws to keep extending that big pasture lead now to 18 to 7 with the final 59 seconds left to go here in quarter number two. Big pasture in all red, India home in all white. Got all kinds of basketball games with the short grass tournament in Altus going on, the Titan Classic in Carl Albert going on, and here at the county tournament, the first of four ball games. This one is our first one. We'll come back with Fletcher in the Elgin JV in game number two. Crosses the timeline with the final 45 seconds left to go in quarter number two. It's for Hester and back up top. Let's that one sail. And there is a three ball from your Walters Co op, 875-3344. That just keeps going with the big pasture lead to bring it to 21. 21 to 7. And under the basket for two as India Homa gets on the board after a, a drought. The final three seconds before we get to the half. Let's that one sail, and we are at half. Big pasture leads at half, 21 to 9, and we will be back. With more second half action and so much more as the county tournament continues right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group helps you feel safe and secure utilizing simple, reliable technology. Allow our team of experts to help you design the right system with high-definition surveillance cameras, cutting-edge smart alarm systems, and thoughtfully designed access control for your home or business. Work, sleep, and play with confidence, knowing CTG is your technology partner. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. 
Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate.
We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Coast Technology Group helps you feel safe and secure utilizing simple, reliable technology. Allow our team of experts to help you design the right system with high-definition surveillance cameras, cutting-edge smart alarm systems, and thoughtfully designed access control for your home or business. Work, sleep, and play with confidence, knowing CTG is your technology partner. Back to action as we start second half action here at the Comanche County Basketball Tournament. Glad you could join us. I'm going to let that one sail. Big pasture in all red, going to be on this side of the on the floor. Let's that one off the mark. Quickly got a whistle and a foul. Going to be out. Welcome into our third quarter, which is brought to you by our Hart Wyatt Funeral Home, dedicated to providing services to the families of Temple, Walters, Cotton County, and Southwest Oklahoma with care and compassion and professionalism. For 105 years, families have trusted Hart Wyatt Funeral Home to help them with honorable ceremonies and remembrance of your loved one. 202 East Colorado in Walters. And we'll have some substitutions coming in. Still at the 21-9 mark here of the third quarter. Off the mark and up and in. For those who come out here in the afternoon, sport girls basketball for the county tournament. This is girls' day today. Boys will be in action tomorrow. And then we'll have the finals. Finals coming up on Saturday. Down low post. I'm going to go up top. Inside the paint, double team with the defenders. Out to the left wing. Let's that one go off the mark. And 
Falls safely away. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touched by Andy Ahoma. So big pasture. Whistle. And a timeout is called by India Homa. And they'll take one, we'll take one, and we will be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Feet. We use them every day. Working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. All right, back here to action. 5.04 left to go in the third. Big pasture with the lead. Make it 23 to 9. So they'll go to the consolation finals winner of this contest Saturday at 11 a.m. Girls starting off with the tournament on uh, Martin Luther King Day on Monday. Separate those to get to this point off the Range for a three-ball opportunity. Walters three, and that misses the mark. Needs a little bit of help underneath. A little give and go, and she'll back out of that. Just playing a little keep away at this point. Whistle to travel is called. Look at the big pasture. India Homa. The clash here. In our second featured game will be Fletcher versus the Elgin JV. Now, you say Elgin JV girls and Cash JV boys join the tournament because Frederick, and you can catch some of that action in the and that rims out with the shot, gets the rebound, but tipped with four defenders. And that loose ball into the hands of Andy Elma. Let's that one sail for a three. Back irons, no good. Loose ball, and it goes out of bounds. But Frederick joined the short grass tournament in Altus. You can catch some of that that was been going on today. That's a Thursday through Saturday tournament. And then also the Titan Classic that is started today and runs through Saturday with finals. And we have got a five second violation. So she wasn't able to get any help. Twenty-three to nine. So halfway through this third quarter, India Home are going to try to find a little bit of a groove, and Rangers just kind of working their offense. And this is great for these, all the tournaments across the state. And there's a foul coming back down and a whistle. Got three fouls for now we add to the fourth for Big Pasture. None for Andy Ahoma starting the second half.
foul is going to be on number 22. And you know, like when they when they when they make these programs up, uh, always always happens that there's going to be number changes. So I apologize if we don't get who it was called on, but when you get a foul, you don't really want it anyway. Back on the high end of the glass, gets the rebound, puts back up, and there's going to be a foul and a shooting. Katie Skinner, 5'7", sophomore, will go to the line for Big Pasture Lady Rangers. Your Hillary. Charity Stripe sponsor for your three throws, providing ultra-fast broadband, digital, cable, and telephone service to thousands of customers from across Oklahoma. Phone 580-529-5000. Let's that one sail in. She gets them both. Making them pay with the free throws at the Charity Stripe. Two for two and 322 with 25 to nine in the lead. We'll let that one sail back off the mark. And a whistle and a timeout is called. So as they take one, we'll take it with them. A 30-second timeout. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. All right. To action after the quick 30 second timeout with 302 left to go here in the third quarter 25 to 9 the score big pasture with the lead look to inbound here with Able to get that one to go. A little exchange of possession in India Homa. 219 left to go here in this third quarter. And we'll go to the Indioma Hillary Communications Charity Strike. Gets that one to go in. Chips away in that lead. Cutting that lead to 25 to 12 and hits the front iron. No, loose ball picked up by Big Pasture. And And a whistle and a foul. With the push down underneath. And the has picked up their second now. Foul's going to be on Becky Burgess. That's going to be her second.
Hillary Communications Charity Stripe and the free throw sponsor. Call 529-5000. Providing ultra-fast broadband digital cable and television telephone, telephone services to thousands of customers across the great state of Oklahoma. Under two minutes left to go here in the third quarter, 25-12. to 12. Big pasture with the lead. Indiana still fighting back. Tries to go baseline, loses it into the hands of Big Pasture with a steal. And quickly down the floor. She's going to try to go all the way and gets caught in the baseline. But inside the paint, rolls around and up and in for the bucket. To the gracious crowd of Big Pasture that gets excited for another bucket to make it 27-12 with a final 116 left to go. Loose ball in the lane, picked up across the timeline. One of four, that's going to go out of bounds, last touched by Indiahoma, so Big Pasture will retain possession. So the first of the four ball games, but we have Fletcher and Elgin JV coming up next, then Walters and Geronimo at 7-10, and then Chattanooga and Sterling at 8-30. So we've got the first of our four with a buck five left to go here in the third quarter. So as Brown gets a little bit of help and it's going to be a foul, we're going to get a little bit more action of more physical in the lane. Checking in for India Homa, the Lady Warriors. Stackley. Steckley, Gracie Steckley, the senior. As Green puts it up, banks off the glass for two. So Big Pasture really kind of finding a rhythm now to bring the score to 29. 29 to 12 with the final 43 seconds left to go here in the third. Gonna bounce around and it's gonna be out of bounds. Thirty seconds remain. Let that one for three ball NBA range. No, a college range. It was right above the red. But misses that with the final 20 seconds left to go. Quickly down the floor. Here comes the big pasture, Lady Rangers. Readjusts on the floor. Looks back for the outlet. Final 10 seconds left to go. She's going to have to engage. She drives. Oh, an open lane and up for good for two. So you caught the defense napping, and that was just enough to make it 31 to 12 after three quarters of play. Big pasture leads. We'll come back with the fourth and final period right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. So we start the fourth and final period. 
with a bucket in for the Lady Rangers to start. They just kind of right where they left off to get the bucket to end the, four, uh, the third quarter. Indiahoma going to let that one go and eh, just it doesn't get the rim. Eastside Pharmacy is your fourth and final period. Eastside Pharmacy, you can count on personal attention provided by their caring professional staff. Their expertly trained pharmacists and friendly staff pride themselves on making sure your pharmacy experience exceeds expectations. Visit today, convenient drive through experience the Eastside Pharmacy difference. 3612 Southeast Lee Boulevard here in Lawton. Go to the Hillary free throw line, the charity stripe opportunity for Indiahoma. Rims out, gets the rebound, and she gets fouled all the way. And she'll go to the line shooting too. Thirty-three to twelve. First of our four, and we want to thank you if you're joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube. And, of course, if you can download us free, uh, we have a free app. It's on Apple and Android devices. Just search Oklahoma Sports Network. You'll find us there. You can find everything that's going on in the network with all the basketball games that I mentioned. Now, also, if you like us on Facebook, that way you'll find out what we've got coming up, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even our TikTok. So we've got plenty of ways that you can find us with 7.23 left to go here in the fourth and final period. Coach wants him to pick up the temple a little bit. Let that one sail off the mark. Get the rebound. For the initial drive and tipped around high off the glass, off the arc, tipped away and into the hands of India Homa. We're going to wait, make sure, make sure you didn't get the three second violation. As they were counting it, plus the 10 seconds, crosses the timeline, gets it in plenty of time with a bounce pass in over to Johnson, misses that, goes out of bounds, last touched by the Lady Rangers, so Indiahoma will retain possession. What's that one sail? Back irons, no. A little heave-ho and a push by Johnson. Doesn't go and rattles out of bounds. So big passer is going to able to get the possession. Winner of this will advance to the consolation finals. That will be 11 o'clock on Saturday. Big pasture to inbounds for Madison Brown. Looks for a little bit of help. Gets down to Skinner. Good defense. Had to make that an uncomfortable shot. Gets the rebound, and we got a foul on the way down, and we'll go to the line shooting two. Be Kylie Martin, a freshman. We mentioned Big Pasture have got a lot of freshmen. Bend in the knees up and hits the front iron. No. So you get. Looking for the future, you know, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, six on this team are freshmen. Rolls out, you know, it's all about experience, you know, and you get this experience at the Cal tournament. And that's one thing that always looking to do. Let's that one sail off the mark. 
Clock continues to roll. Going to go try to go this one coast to coast. Misses the opportunity. India Homa, no foul. Going to do the same favor and then loses it on the line. Saves it before going out of bounds. And now they're going to say a jump ball is called. Nice little drive to the outside of the lane and lets that one sail. 33 to 12 is your score. Big pass, you're with the lead. Five minutes left to go here. Looks to drive in the lane, little floater, and then there's going to say a blocking foul on the way in. Hillary Communications free throw. Gets the first one up and in. Second one misses the mark. So one for one and 34 to 12. Bounce pass to try to get that one on the Tries to get that baseline, but Big Pasture really blocks that for Katie Colley was unable to go and lets that one in a three ball for a Walters co-op three is good. So Indiahoma finally gets some points to answer. Bring it to 15 with the final 4-12 left to go. Oh, a nice little tap out, and then that's going to go out of bounds. Indiahoma should retain possession, but a great defensive stop, and then able to tap that out. But Macy Carter is going to be able to inbounds for Indiahoma. Going to hand that over to Burgess. Becky Burgess with four minutes left to go here. Fourth and final period from your east side pharmacy fourth quarter. Let's that one sail, and that was not going to be a three. That's going to be, no, it is going to be a three ball. So another Walters co-op three. Opportunity goes in to chip away at that lead to bring a 34-18. As we said, we got a lot of basketball. Started at 10 o'clock this morning with the Titan Classic. There was eight games they had to play because there's eight boys, eight girls in a tournament that goes through Saturday up at Carl Albert, one of the teams on the network of our 12 schools at Oklahoma Sports Network. And then Altus hosting the short grass tournament. Frederick, who was in this county tournament, is over playing in that tournament. So you can catch some of that action. So we've got all kinds of basketball. And you can watch any of this on demand, too. So if you missed any of the action, you can catch some of this. A little steal, come back, opportunity, and the bucket counts. So how about that? And the harm. So you get it to 20. Now try to make it for the three-point play. So Taya Cotty Colley. The junior tries to make it a three-point swing and does. Gets it to 21 and chips away at that lead. Makes things interesting with the three-minute mark left to go of this contest. Down by 13. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touched by Indiahoma. So the Lady Rangers will inbounds from underneath. In the fourth quarter Eastside Pharmacy, fourth. It's called timeout, so 
They take it, we'll take it. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When I'm flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, but I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know I'm an American Airman, kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown, Jr. Come join us. All right, so after the quick timeout, a little bit of a run for India Homa. The 302 mark. So we've got three minutes left to go, and India Homa trying to make a little run here. Big pass here with the quick inbounds to try to get a quick score. Misses the mark, goes out of bounds, but last touch by India Homa. So big pass here will get the ball once again to retain with Martin underneath. Outlet, that's going to be a three. Misses the mark. Loose ball and a jump ball will be called. And the possession arrow will stay with big pasture. So get the opportunity, a loose ball, get the jump ball, get the opportunity. Possession arrow stays in your favor. Oh, a little sneaky. Get underneath. That's what you got to do is to box that out. So a quick one from the inbounds from out of bounds to make it 36-21 with 2.42 left to go here in this contest. Take a short little break and then Fletcher and the Elgin JB girls. As we mentioned earlier, if you're just joining us, why the Elgin JB girls or the Cash JB boys are in this tournament. Frederick is playing in the short grass tournament in Alta, so they had to pick up a boys and girls team with that, and so they kind of split the difference. And so Elgin girls agreed to come play in the JV, and the Cash boys JV team agreed to play with the boys. Hillary Communications free throw. Opportunity for the one. Goes in. Second shot coming up. Rims out. Loose ball picked up by the Lady Rangers. 2.30 left to go. As Brown will cross the timeline. Look for a little bit of help. Goes off to Green. Green over to Skinner. Skinner. Once, two, and three off the rim. No good. Rebound, India home and the Lady Warriors. So here comes Johnson. And then a throw away. Opportunity at a fast break. Opportunity layup up off the glass is good for two for the Lady Rangers. So just when things were getting a little bit sketchy to bring it within 13, Lady Rangers open it up just a bit with 151. Let's that one sail off the mark. Gets the rebound with Steckley. Turn around and lets that three ball go with a Walters co-op three is good. To bring it to 25. Back to a 13-point lead. Sounds like if India Home would have got things started a little bit earlier. They both really kind of stalled in that first quarter. Score stayed relatively still for a while. Hillary free throw, charity stripe opportunity for Big Pasture up and in. Bring a 39. Second shot. 
Gets the front of the rim and then gets the back iron to bring him to 40. 40-25 with the final 123 to get ready for the consolation finals. Going to be played at 11 o'clock on Saturday. Going the championship round over on the other end, a little scoop store steal. Back with a free layup is good to extend the big pasture lead 42 to 25 with the final 57 seconds. Little an inerrant shot. Oh, and Indiahoma puts one back with the rebound up and in. Eastside Pharmacy fourth quarter coming to an end with the final 33 seconds. Let's that one sail, misses the mark into the hands of Indiahoma and the final 27. Looks for a little bit of help, bails out, 18 seconds left to go. Top of the key. Looks for, oh, and nice. That was a little sneaky move inside for Burgess. That go to his out of bounds and last touched by the Lady Rangers. So Indiana will have another opportunity at the last bucket here with nine seconds left to go. And a little tap away. Uh, now, this is great to be in these tournaments at this time of the year because then that way you can really find out what you need to do to kind of get ready because basketball season starts and finishes so fast. And a lot of times because holidays, you know, begin and Christmas comes and you kind of forget about everything. And then they're full force in this January to get these tournaments in. They play the four tournaments that they can in a year. Back irons, no, that is no good. So it ends. 42-27 to 27 is your final big pasture over Indiana. We'll take a short little break and be back with Fletcher and Elgin JV in game number two of the first of our four. You're watching the Comanche County Basketball Tournament right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group helps you feel safe and secure utilizing simple, reliable technology. Allow our team of experts to help you design the right system with high-definition surveillance cameras, cutting-edge smart alarm systems, and thoughtfully designed access control for your home or business. Work, sleep, and play with confidence, knowing CTG is your technology partner. Oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal.
comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Glad you could join us for game number two, and we want to thank our fine sponsors to make this thing possible for this Comanche County basketball tournament in day number three, featuring the girls, uh, First Baptist Church from Fletcher, Brox Industries, Bridges Auction, Walters Bank and Trust, First Baptist Church of Walters, and Heritage Pharmacy. Proud supporters of this Comanche County basketball tournament. So we're getting ready to go, as we mentioned, we've got the Elgin JV squad going to play against the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. So we got eight on the board and ready to tip this one off. Elgin JV all in red. And Fletcher in there all white with black trim and the numbers. We'll get with the Lady Owls starting off with the first possession after the opening get-go. And we've already got a first step out of bounds and, and our first turnover. I'm going to let this just kind of work the ball around with perimeter shooting Elgin JV with the tough defense. It's going to be a travel called. So Fletcher will. Be able to inbounds, and we got a travel called the other way. Scoreless as we get started in our first quarter. Loose ball stolen. Back down, Elgin JB with a fast break opportunity. Puts it up off the glass and in for two. So first score comes from the Elgin JV squad. And gets the steal and then a jump ball is called. And the possession arrow will stay with Fletcher. So welcome into game number two of, uh, of our four. And then the winner's bracket will see Walters and Geronimo at 7-10. And then Chattanooga will play Sterling in the nightcap. Fletcher will inbounds. Almost got away from Simmons. She crosses the timeline. Gets a little bit of help. Contested Elgin Lady JV team. In action here for the first time in the county tournament. Remember Elgin and Cash used to be in that tour tournament. Of course, as they got the bigger classes, it really was not making sense for them to play. And really Elgin JV has come in because Frederick has gone to the short grass tournament. We mentioned that earlier. Well, round ball perimeter shooting, back irons, no good. It's a little bit of help and it rolls, no good.
Top of the key, looks to let that one sail. Back irons, no good. Gets the rebound though, goes baseline, looks for an opportunity to get down underneath, but the loose ball comes into the hands of Fletcher and Lady Wildcats trying to get their first score of the night. Crosses the timeline with 5.35 left to go. She's not gonna wait and hesitate, and she's gonna get fouled on the way in. As Anna Simmons says, I'm not waiting for you to set up. And she'll go to the charity stripe shooting too. With Hillary Communications free throw sponsor, providing ultra fast broadband, digital cable, telephone service. Thousands of customers across Oklahoma call 580-529-5000. Can't wait to see their headquarters that are finishing up there in Elgin. Just like that, charity stripe opportunity gets you to sink them both, and we're all tied up at two apiece. 523 left to go. And answering points with points in a quick fashion with a two for the Elgin Lady Owls. And that will be taken out of bounds. It's always nice because our network goes pretty much everywhere, and we're going to shoot two. But we have the superintendent of Elgin Schools, Nate Merez, said that uh, he's up in Purcell at a tournament, so he's having to bounce around, and he's watching on OSN. And Tanner is coaching this young JV team. Remember Tanner? Hits the front end of the uh, iron and no good. And keep a scoop on that. Back irons, no good with the opportunity. Still stays 4-2 in the opportunity. Fletcher Wildcats coming up. Second shot. A little bend of the knees up. Back irons, no. In the paint for the rebound. Good defense by the girls and made that a contested shot. Goes inerrant too high. Into the hands of the Elgin Lady JV team. Outside perimeter. Try to look to engage away from off the arc. And we've talked about that. I mean, I know it's frustrating as a player. You've got three markings for a three ball, and this court is not friendly. Until they redo it, you've got a NBA range, black on the outside. Then you have a red collegiate three, and then you have the inner black high school three. And, and if you're playing in a court, you have no idea what that is and how that comes about. But nonetheless, 433 left to go. In quarter one, top of the key, looks to try to go outside. Going to work that perimeter. Another three off the mark. And that was from collegiate range, and there's going to be a whistle on the floor and a push with a foul. And Elgin has picked up their fifth team foul, so they're going to put Fletcher in the bonus if they're not careful here in just a couple crosses the timeline, but they're playing aggressive basketball, so it's really not going to be lightly. I mean, they're right in your face, and there you go. That's what I'm saying, and, 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 that's, and that's where they're going to call it. They're going to call it tight, and you're going to play tight. Uh, MacArthur is very, very similar at that. They're going to play very aggressive. Picked up their sixth. I do not have a team roster for Elgin JV team. I'm sorry they did not put that in the program, but Fletcher puts a little back iron off of the glass for two. And we're all tied up at four apiece. Halfway through quarter number one. Looks for the give underneath. A little bit high off the mark. Misses. Opportunity with the Fletcher Wildcat rebound. She backs away. Comes out for the left wing three. No good. Back into her hand, she puts it back. Rifles two, back to back, up and no. Back irons and JV Elgin girls with the rebound. Crosses the timeline, top of the key. A little bounce pass, loose ball, picked up almost. And Fletcher is going to get that with a free opportunity with a layup. That is contested, no good. Put back up, second opportunity is good. 
And the Fletcher Lady Wildcats will take the lead for the first time, 6-4, to four, with 3.03 left to go here in quarter number one. Nice little turnaround jumper outside the paint, no good. Rebounded by Fletcher. Thanks for tuning in for those who are watching on Facebook and on YouTube Live. Also for those who download us on Apple and Android devices. Great opportunity for you to be able to connect to us anywhere. And that is the seventh team foul by the Elgin JV squad. And so now that will put them in the bonus. And your free throw sponsor, Hillary Communications, providing ultra-fast broadband digital cable for thousands of customers across Oklahoma. Call 529-5000. Go to their website if you want to know more. Up and in. Bring it to seven, our largest lead of the ball game. Ben of the D's second shot up and also good. So they double it, eight to four. Fletcher Lady Wildcats with the lead with 244 here at the Comanche County Basketball Tournament. Day number three featuring the girls. Guys will be in action tomorrow, and then we'll have the finals on Saturday. It's kind of loosely thrown in the lane, so Fletcher comes up with the steal, crosses the timeline. Again, Elgin really going to play press defense in your face. And then in the little floater lane layup with a one hop, no good, rebounded by Elgin. Going to let that one sail. For a three ball, look, there's a collision of two red jerseys trying to get the rebound. Guys, inside. Fletcher Lady Wildcats with Anna Simmons. With the rebound. And she's going to step out on the lane. She's going to go out of bounds. Uh, the other thing is whether we're talking about threes, about the lines. Uh, there's a full timeout, so we'll discuss that when we come back. We'll be back right after this. You're watching the Comanche County Basketball Tournament live right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. All right, back here at the Comanche County Basketball Tournament, the Great Plains Coliseum. Glad you could join us here. 145 left to go in quarter number one. It's an 8-4 to four Fletcher Lady Wildcats lead. In our earlier contest, Big Pasture beat India Homa 42-27. to 27. In the nightcap versions, we've got two in the winner's bracket, Walters, who advanced with their win over India Homa will play Geronimo, where they beat Big Pasture. So Walters and Geronimo, and then on the other end, Chattanooga and Sterling. Consolation rounds for the girls will begin on Saturday for a full slate of basketball. As we said, we've got so much basketball. It's like overdosed of basketball because it started at 10 a.m. this morning for the Titan Classic that we have going on right now in Carl Albert. Then the short grass tournament in Altus started at 11 a.m. and it's been running all day. We have four games slated. We already had the first one and this one and two more after this. And then we also, it's a loose ball picked up, and that's going to go out of bounds. But, I mean, and then, of course, in southeast Oklahoma with Bravado, Bravado TV, we've got a, another tournament going on. So, basically, when you download the app, you can have all those games, and you can bounce back and forth and check on scores. And that's why when we have 12 schools in action, like, especially during football season, you can kind of bounce around. So, the best way to do it is download for free on your Apple and Android devices. We're also on Roku, Amazon, Fire, and Apple TV, a slap. 
in the lane with a loose ball. And Fletcher's going to pick up only their second. With a buck three left to go in quarter number one. Goes out. All right, loose ball, and they're going to call a jump ball. Yeah, it was pretty quick. Ball was loose into the hands of both the defender and the offense. And we'll tie up, we'll call it good. Now, to 48 seconds left to go. I'm going to let that one sail off the mark, and that's going to miss opportunity. So Merez will check in for the Elgin Lady Owls. Little bend at the knees, up, back irons, no good. Rebound. Quickly down the floor with the final 39 seconds left to go before the end of the first quarter. Uh, tries to get to Merez over on the outside, a little bit too high and away, and that goes out of bounds. Inbounds. With the final 29 seconds, we talk about that pressure. It's right there, and they're not going away. So you better have good fundamental ball skills. Really great for this JV team to get varsity experience like that on the floor for free in a county tournament like this. So Elgin really gets to benefit from it, from the playing time that they get out of this. Outlet come inside. A little, oh, it took a little extra step, and they called that trap. One little extra in the lane. Still stuck at eight to four. What's that one sail? Cross that out and look for a little bit of help, and that's going to end the first quarter. Eight to four is your score. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Back to action here as we start second quarter action right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. It's 8-4 to four Fletcher Wildcat lead. And welcome into your second quarter brought to you by Arbass Bank. Loose ball picked up by the Elgin team and the Lady Owls. Arbass is committed to the communities that they're providing a full range of financial services for both individuals and businesses. Manage your accounts anywhere, online and mobile banking. Member FDIC, Arbass Bank. Proud supporters of the Comanche County Basketball Tournament with the Oklahoma Sports Network. Lady Wildcats going to round ball that out for an outside three. Opportunity missed. Saved before it goes on the line, and then that's going to be thrown out of bounds, so Elgin will retain.
Opportunity three ball coming back the other way for Elgin. No, misses the mark. Fletcher Lady Wildcats with the rebound with Lewis. Over to Simmons. Simmons, just a freshman, crosses the timeline. Heavily guarded, goes around her defender, misses the opportunity and the put back as we're going to go to the line shooting two. It's funny, it's what Mr. Morez was talking about, Tanner, and boy, we saw him as a player. And so, you know, you kind of go, you know, it just makes you feel older is all I can say as <laughs> you watch these guys play on a, a court and what they are able to do and gets that one to, to go in. Make it nine, trying to get to double digits and do, it does. So Fletcher Lady Wildcats get to double digit first over the Elgin Lady Owls with 6.40 left to go here in the second quarter. Just underway. It's picked up, stolen by the Lady Wildcats. Quickly into the hands of Simmons. Back up way up to Harrell. Harold looks for a little help with a little give and go. Tries to go to Simmons. Little floater inside the lane. It's good for two. So she gets it in. A hot hand is dealt with her to extend their largest lead tonight, 12 to 4. Elgin Lady Owls looking to try to get a score. Oh, it's like miscommunication. Wanted the low post. She was posted up a little bit higher. Loose ball thrown away. And it makes it into the hands of the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. Morez on the heavy defense. Little handoff give and go to Harrell. She goes up in the lane, and she'll be fouled. Opportunity at shooting two. Your Hillary Communications free ball and the free opportunity at the Charity Stripe. Call 529-5000, providing ultra-fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone services. Hillary Communications. Head office there right off the interstate by Medicine Park. Can't wait to see that finished. Really is nice. More, say the rebound for the Elgin Lady Owls. Gets that one to go. Kind of stuck there. You got the defensive skills, but just trying to get that offense working just a little bit more. But since we are in the bonus, might as well just put them almost in the double bonus. Rattles in and out. Second shot coming up. Up and in. So they're going to say that is that a lane violation from the shooter? A whistle? We're going to take that one off. So, yeah, we're going to still stay at 13 then. What's that one say? A little misses the mark. Rebound by Fletcher and the Lady Wildcats coming down with a give and go, and she is going to get fouled. Bucket counts. We have someone on the roster that we do not have in the program. Don't you think that stinks? <laughs> so the basket is good. Gives her an opportunity for the harm with a three-point swing. Hits it, and we get a lane violation. And that was from the Lady Wildcats, so no on the opportunity. Look for the rebound, put back, no good. Fletcher coming back down on the other end of the floor. What's that one? Sale hits the back glass. No, loose ball, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Elgin, so 
Fletcher will retain possession. As Simmons looks to inbounds. Just for a little bit for Avelia. It's just going to say a little took an extra step trying to get over to Grace Harrell, and she took the extra one. With 4.43 left to go before the half. As we said, full slate of basketball. You can kind of bounce around, check all the action. If you don't catch it live, you can watch it on demand. Also, if you're at home, Roku, Amazon, Fire, and Apple TV is a great opportunity to have on your home devices as well as on the go. Let's that one float, and finally, so you say finally gets the two, gets to roll in for the Elgin JV team to cut the lead, 15-6. to six. Free give and go, layup, missed opportunity, and there is going to be a foul, not a jump ball. With the push, with the Fletcher, with the hole, really, with the Lady Wildcats. It's going to be on Lewis, and it's going to be her first, team third. It's that one sail off the mark. We have another one that we've got coming up. As we have the boys in the Carl Albert Titan Classic with Carl Albert playing at 7 o'clock. We'll hit on Facebook for those who are watching there. And opportunity at the Hillary Communications free throw line stripe. Gets the first one to go. Second shot coming up. Nothing but net. 17-6, largest lead for the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. 3.51 left to go here in quarter number two. Let's that one sail way off the mark. A little bit too much for Merez. Oh, a trap and a steal, and then a, oh, a tie-up and a jump ball call. Possession arrow is going to go with Elgin, so the Lady Owls will get the possession. Trying to chip away at that lead. Try to force it in the middle, and that loose ball picked up, and there is picked up by the Elgin Lady Owls. Little floater gets tipped in the defense, down underneath, and into the hands of Simmons. Or Simons. She'll get a little bit of help as she backs her way. And that's going to be a nice steal. She turned around, did not look where she was throwing in the lane. It was a Lady Owl, and she picks up the steal. 2.55 left to go. Let's that one go up. No good. Loose ball on the floor. Picked up by Fletcher. And... A timeout is called by the Wildcats, so they take a timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoma, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. All right, back here at the Great Plains Coliseum for the Comanche County Basketball Tournament. Day number three, we played Monday with all the slate of girls games on Martin Luther King Day. And then Tuesday, we had all the boys in action. Wednesday was off, and then four girls games today. Just for a little bit of help, 
momentarily misses that. Gets, tries to go around the, oh man, it's going to be a charge called against the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. There's a turnover there. So Elgin Lady Owls had their defense set up in the lane, and she had nowhere to go but to collide into the defender, and they called that one. Whereas we'll go back to the bench. A little bit of substitutions coming in with 2.20 mark left to go before the half. Fletcher really clogging that lane down below. They're not letting anything. Oh, and then a loose. I thought she was going to take that one. She dishes it out, outside perimeter. Three ball on the way, misses the mark, hits the front iron, rebounded by the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. Back to Simons. And a little bit of extra step she got called for traveling as Avila. With the final 156 left to go. And crosses the timeline. One forty-four and counting. Baseline stops, gets three defenders to prevent her from penetrating to the basket. Back top of the key, and they'll start new. Fletcher giving it right back to him, and that heavy guarded. There's three defenders there in the lane, puts it high off the glass, misses the mark. Fletcher, Lady Wildcats, with the rebound, with one seventeen before half. Got a pick. Rolled to the basket. She'll go hard, strong, and she'll get fouled on the way up. <laughs> Hillary Communications free throw. Providing the ultra-fast broadband digital cable. For thousands of customers across the great state of Oklahoma. Second shot, also back irons, no good. 17 6 with a buck eight left to go before the half. Quickly down the floor. Sets the defense. Let nothing coming inside. And as soon as they do that, they, they collapse. There's three right there. Got to hand it. That was really good defensive play, but gets the rebound. Loose ball puts up and a whistle on the floor as bodies fly to the floor. Jump ball is called. Possession arrow will go to Fletcher. So let's see if they play for the final shot. Got a substitution coming in for the Lady Wildcats. So Anna will cross the timeline. Final 40 seconds left to go. With the ball and the lead. Oh, that's tipped off and stolen. Elgin Lady Owls on a fast break opportunity. Stops, waits, and she is fouled in the pursuit to the basket. And the bucket goes and is good. So they count it. The opportunity for the three is good. So a three-point extension for the Elgin Lady Owls on a good little run before they end the second quarter with three-point swing. 17-9. to nine. Little floater underneath, back door, no good. Puts it up a little bit too much. Final 14 seconds left to go. Elgin can play for the final shot before the half. Down 17-9 with eight on the clock. Looks for an opportunity down to four. Outside corner, needs to drive, baseline, two, one. Has to get it off, no. So missed an opportunity of clock management. 17-9 is your halftime score. Fletcher Lady Wildcats lead at the half. We'll be back with second half action right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're great.
growing and changing to serve you better. Until then, we're making room and reducing inventory. During our Billingsley Hyundai construction sale, expanding to serve you better. That's the Billingsley way. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Bridges. And I'm Dr. Nathan Buckner. Did you know our dental practice is one of only 6% of practices in the United States that provide care from an all digital platform? We fabricate crowns, bridges, and place implants with advanced digital technology. If you want to be part of this digital revolution in dental care, call us today at 248-6700 or visit our website at bridgesandbugnerdentistry.com. We look forward to providing you with exceptional dental care. The future is here at Comanche County Memorial Hospital with the first and only Da Vinci Surgical Robot. The expertise of our compassionate surgeons combined with this leading technology allows for smaller incisions and a quicker recovery with increased accuracy for a number of surgical needs. Get back into your life's routine faster. Your community hospital, our family caring for yours. Welcome back to the Great Plains Coliseum. We find ourselves at the half. It's halftime here of game number two. Where we have the Fletcher Lady Wildcats leading the Elgin JV team 17 to nine. And we want to thank our fine sponsors to make this all possible for you. First Baptist Church of Fletcher, Brock's Industries, Bridges Auction Service, Walters Bank and Trust, First Baptist Church of Walters, and Heritage Pharmacy. Thank you for your fine support of this Comanche County basketball tournament. Glad to have you along for the ride as we saw Big Pasture beat Indiahoma 42 to 27 in the first game. We also have Walters and Geronimo playing at 7:10, and then Chattanooga and Sterling will play at 8:30. We have got so much basketball going on right now. You can flip around now that it's halftime. Talk to you about the uh, also in Altus is the short grass tournament that's been going on. Frederick, which was in this tournament at the county tournament, is over there playing in that tournament now. Also uh, in in Carl Albert, it's the Titan Class. Classic. We'll also have the boys game featured on Facebook. So those who are watching on Facebook Live, those who are watching on YouTube, download us on our free app on Apple and Android devices by searching the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're also on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. So we'll be back with more halftime and second half action right after this. Comanche County Basketball Tournament live right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am. Whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female, you just know I'm an American airman kicking your butt. I'm General CQ Brown Jr. Come join us. Coast Technology Group helps you feel safe and secure utilizing simple, reliable technology. Allow our team of experts to help you design the right system with high-definition surveillance cameras, cutting-edge smart alarm systems, and thoughtfully designed access control for your home or business. Work, sleep, and play with confidence, knowing CTG is your technology partner. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. 
Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. Feet. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. Welcome back to the Great Plains Coliseum, bringing you this county tournament. It's brought to you by Brox Industries, also First Baptist Church of Fletcher, Bridges Auction Service, Walters Bank and Trust, First, Bank, First Baptist Church of Walters, and Heritage Pharmacy. Proud supporters of this Comanche County basketball tournament. Heading in now to the third quarter here in just a couple of minutes. 17-9 Fletcher Lady Wildcats with the lead. Third quarter is going to be brought to you by Hart Wyatt Funeral Home. Hart Wyatt Funeral Home is dedicated to providing services to the families of Temple, Walters, Cotton County, and Southwest Oklahoma with care, compassion, and professionalism. For 105 years, families have trusted Hart Wyatt Funeral Home. Help them with honorable ceremonies and remembrance of their loved ones. 202 East Colorado in Walters. That's going to be your third quarter sponsor. As we mentioned, we've got Walters and Geronimo playing in the winner's bracket, and they will be playing in the next contest at 7-10 per the doubleheader of the nightcap, followed by Chattanooga and Sterling. And those winners will advance tonight to play on Saturday for the finals of the county tournament. This crowd's starting to come in a little bit. It was uh, after work, and maybe get a quick bite to eat, and then into basketball action. As we said, we've got so much basketball going on right now. We're proud to bring it to you here at the Great Plains Coliseum. Action will resume here shortly.
Okay, we're set to go. Your heart wired funeral home third quarter. Start with the Elgin JB squad with the ball on this end of the court. Going to play on their side of the Fletcher going to immediately put a little bit of pressure. Going to let that one sail up a little bit too high. Loose ball picked up by Fletcher. And a lot of Wildcats with Lewis in the steal. So Elgin gets the ball first, comes up with a turnover. And a traveling is called. Took the extra step. These communities, of course, when they have these sports, this is everything to them. Some without football programs, and so basketball is it. Way to make their statement. Missed opportunity with the Elgin underneath. Fletcher with the rebound, and the Wildcats often go with Anna. Little dish out over to Harrell. She'll get a little bit of help. Elgin JV with a steal, and then she tried to re-steal back. Tipped, loose ball, picked up. Ball really throwing around. Underneath, back door, off the glass, no good. Elgin could have got a quick strike bucket and missed an opportunity. Fletcher going to have a floater, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. Picked up right where we want. With the push. And the Elgin Lady Owls will pick up their first of the second half. Oh, it hit right there on the or bottom of her foot, goes out of bounds, but last touched by Elgin. So Fletcher Lady Wildcats will retain possession with 6.39 left to go here in the third quarter. Loose ball picked up. Lady Owls, two on two. Readjust, and she takes the extra step. So she's called with the travel. I understood what she was wanting to do, take that little bit extra, and she thought maybe I'll get it right there, and that's where we get called. 624 and counting. Oh, nice steal. Read that one delivery. Again, fast break opportunity, slows up, waits up, a little bit opportunity to regroup. Over on the right wing. Back up top. Looks for the give and go, turn around, jumper and no good. Gets the rebound, loose ball, fight for it, and a jump ball will be called. Possession arrow will retain with the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. Try to drive on the far, far side of the court is Anna, and she gets tied up, stolen. Elgin Lady Owls coming back on the other end. Eyes that one up. Hits the front iron. Gets the rebound against two defenders. Up and hard, and that's going to go out of bounds. And a Fletcher Wildcats timeout. So they'll take a timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate. Not only 
these these tournaments, we've also got uh, a lot of action when it comes to the Oklahoma games of the week. In fact, we had Tuttle and Newcastle on Tuesday. That went into overtime, so you can catch that. So that's why follow us on Facebook. You'll know what do you have next? Well, what do you got coming up? Got wrestling next week as well. And a full slate of basketball in February, of course. Get so much going on. Picked up. We got a little bit of a little push out underneath. Stedman's going to pick up her first and the team first for the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. Elgin Lady Owls look for, oh, she she stayed on the top, should add that, but she cut with a break to the basket when the ball was in the air, and then she had nowhere to regroup to get that, so it falls out of bounds. around the baseline and lets that one fly. Kind of been stuck at this score for a while. Both teams playing defensively. Oh, a high floater in the lane, high off the mark. There's a loose ball, fight for it, and a foul is called. Fletcher is going to be called with that. Caitlin Avila was going to pick up her third. See if the Elgin Lady Owls get into double digits. She gets the pick, rolls to the near side, gets back over. Outside corner. Back up top of the key. Oh, and there's a little bit of collision. That's a little bit too much, and that's going to be Anna. She's going to collide into getting the Fletcher Wildcat third foul here in the second half. Elgin with only one. Remember, it was reversed in the first half. That's going to be her second. It's that one sail. She was just out of position underneath for that after that rebound to try to put that back up off the glass. She was underneath the basket. Got kind of in the wrong position. Into the hands of Fletcher. Lady Wildcats go, and she gets that fouled on the way up, and she'll shoot too. And it'll go back to the... Hillary Communications free throw. Providing ultra-fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone service. Call 529-5000 or visit them online. Hillary Communications. Shot is up and good. 30-second time. I will keep it here. So 19-9, a 10-point lead for the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. In the earlier contest, Big Pasture beat India Homa 42-27. We'll have the next two slated games. 7-10 will feature Walters and Geronimo, followed by Chattanooga and Sterling. It's kind of back-to-back -back basketball for those who are joining us online and on Facebook, YouTube Live. Also, I mentioned short grass in Altus, uh, the Titan Classic and Carl Albert, this one here at the county tournament. We've also got Bravado TV on the Oklahoma Sports Network with uh, tournaments in southeast Oklahoma. So we've got you covered. Where sports is our middle name, we are the Oklahoma Sports Network. Going to look to inbounds. Elgin will take it across the timeline. Uncontested, no defense. Earlier contest, we had a lot of full court press. Fletcher gets back in their zone. Goes baseline. Tries to force that in. There's going to be a jump ball called, and the possession arrow will stay on this end of the floor.
So Elgin underneath. Tipped away and back into the hands. Goes baseline. Oh, just wasn't looking, but she saves it. Collision and Fletcher with the body and the loose ball. And they pick up their fourth. Nothing else. You're going to put Elgin at the free throw line. Looks to go baseline and 245 remain. Loose ball and that's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Elgin, so Fletcher will retain with 240 left to go here in the third. Crosses the timeline and oh, a little give and go underneath and the bucket gets going to count. That's pretty. Get to see that one again here as you count the basket. The Hillary Communications charity stripe. Opportunity for the three-point play. And does. Like that makes it a 22-9 score. 2.24 left to go here in the third. Almost a little steal there. Anna licking her lips to say, I think I'm going to get that one. Loose ball picked up, and there is a fight for it and a jump ball, and that possession is going to go to Fletcher. With the final 2.03 left to go here in the third quarter. That's in the lane and a blocking foul. And it goes back to the line for the Hillary Communications free throw. Second shot also good. Twenty-four to nine, with the buck forty-seven left to go in the third quarter. Oh, tried to get it out here to the wing, and oh, there's a collision. There's a foul there by a lady owl. It's going to be their fifth. Fletcher with fourth. Merez will check in for the Elgin Lady Owls. Little floater tries to go up, and she'll go to the line shooting too. So Ayla Lewis at the Hillary Communications free throw. Shot up and good. They've done their homework as far as a lot of making their free throws. Pretty good. Second shot coming up is also good. 26 to nine with a buck 17 left to go here in the third quarter. Gonna get trapped before she goes to the timeline. She gets passed before the 10 second count. Down to a buck five. A little bit of help out to Merez. Merez bullet passed out underneath a little bit too much with a two handed throw. And that goes out of bounds. Under a minute. Crosses the timeline is Anna. A 
That's a steal by Merez. She tries to get it off, uh, and then it just kind of out of bounds. But it is going to be last touch by Fletcher, so Elgin will retain possession. Back up top. Top of the key. Merez inside, triple teamed, back out. Three ball on the way. Back irons, no good. Rebounded Fletcher. Final 19 to go. Cross of the timeline at 15. She'll hold up. She'll get a pick. Rolls left, back up top. Down to seven. Down to five seconds. Going to have to go. Three, two, one, and she heave ho, and there's no whistle, and that will end three quarters of play with the Fletcher Lady Wildcats leading 26-9. We'll be back with the fourth and final period right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Well, welcome to the fourth and final period of game number two. Had our first matchup as Big Pasture beat Indiahoma 42 to 27. Welcome into your Eastside Pharmacy fourth quarter. At Eastside Pharmacy, you can count on personal attention provided by their caring professional staff, their expertly trained pharmacists and friendly staff, pride themselves on making sure your pharmacy experience exceeds expectations. Visit us today to experience the Eastside Pharmacy Difference, 3612 Southeast Lee Boulevard in Lawton with a convenient drive through location. So the Elgin Lady Owls will inbounds, trying to get to double digits here. Trying to get some of their offense working. Let's that one sail for a three ball. Misses the mark. Fletcher Lady Wildcats with the rebound. So you say great experiences. Elgin JV team and the Cash Boys JV team playing in this tournament to replace Frederick, who is now playing in the Alta Short Grass Tournament. Catch that on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Hillary Communications free throw opportunity. First one is no good, missed. Second shot is no good. And a steal opportunity. Fletcher coming back down the other way. It's seven minutes left to go here in this contest. Consolation game will be played. Third place will be played at 2 o'clock. But the consolation round, the winner of this will play Big Pasture at 11. Little floater, bounces once off the 
Glass to the rim and no good. Rebounded by the Lady Wildcats. A little bit of contested in the lane. Coming back quickly down the line. Oh, almost a little steal as Anna had an opportunity at a fast break opportunity steal and layup. Missed that. Sails out of bounds. And there's a steal. Elgin Lady Owls coming back down the other way. It looks for the free layup, and it's up and in. Finally get into double digits for the Elgin Lady Owls. 5.43 left to go. Bounce pass, goes baseline. For a little bit of help. Retouch. Wow, that's a three ball on the way. Hits the front iron and then back out of bounds. No good. Timeout is called by the Elgin Lady Owls, so they take a timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. Well, after the timeout, as Elgin calls the timeout. About five minutes left to go here in this contest. Glad well, we could be here a lot of basketball. You know, played the four girls games on Monday to get us to this possession for day number three. And you had the four boys games on Tuesday, take Wednesday off, and then we're Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days, so it's a lot of basketball to be played here at the Coliseum. Thanks to Richard Poole and all the hospitality the Coliseum gives, and concession area, and plenty for everyone here in basketball. And a timeout is called by Fletcher. So we'll keep it here. Something that coach didn't like. Want to see? Still kind of trying to keep things moving. As people are trying to come into the game for the Walters Geronimo setup. This is in the winner's bracket. That will be played after the conclusion of this contest, followed by Chattanooga and Sterling. Those winners will meet on Saturday at 6.30 for the championship of the Great Plains Coliseum. Walters looks to try to defend their championship. They girls won last year. And then tomorrow night, we'll have all the boys in action. For a full slate of Friday games starting at 4.30. What's that one sail? It gets tipped and goes out of bounds. Last touched by Elgin, so Fletcher will retain possession. Sails and back irons, no. Bounce pass over to Anna. Looks for a little bit of help. 
439 to go. Hits the underneath of the net. And with the push, already with eight team fouls, has Fletcher in the one and one. She shoots two, hits rim, rim, and then in. It's the shooter's roll. Bring it to 27. Second shot coming up from your Hillary Communications free throw. Opportunity is up and in. They've been really good at the charity stripe shooting those shots tonight for the Fletcher Lady Wildcats. Looking there, trying to punch their way to take on Big Pasture 11 o'clock on Saturday in the consolation round. Well, we're halfway through fourth and final period. Regroup the top of the key and lets that one sail for a three ball. Hits the back iron, no good. Loose ball picked up, stolen by Elgin, and the put back off the glass is good for two. So, playing smart. And a whistle and a foul. It's going to be a foul on Merez. That's going to be her third. Shot is up and good. Your Hillary Communications free throw, Charity Stripe sponsor. Providing ultra-fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone service. Gets them both to bring it to 30. 30 to 13 with 323 left to go. Your east side pharmacy fourth quarter. And that's going to be thrown and goes out of bounds. Crowd is still starting to pick up just a little bit more. Ready for that Walters-Geronimo contest. You can see in the county of what this really means to these communities. Ball sails out. and Elgin will still have possession. Let's that one go, sails, oh, and rims in and out for a three ball opportunity. That was a, a nice look. Tries to get it inside, another three ball opportunity. That one is good. That's a Walters co-op three. Gilts the Elgin Lady Owls to 16. And back to the Hillary free throw line we go. As Anna puts that first shot up and good when we talk about their free throw shooting. Well, he's made a big difference tonight. Second shot coming up. Well, that one didn't roll in. I think after she got the rebound, she stepped out of bounds and she felt so bad because now they give the ball back to Fletcher underneath their own goal. Give and go in the lane, and she gets that a little bit high off the mark, gets the rebound, puts it back up, fakes the three, goes baseline, little floater, up a little bit too much. Right past the goal. Elgin quickly down the floor, trying to get to Merez. Merez inside, little front end hits the front iron, and then it's going to go out of bounds. So last touched 
by Elgin. Fletcher Lady Wildcats with the possession. Over to Avila. Tries to get into Anna. Tipped away by two defenders for Elgin. Anna was the last to touch it, so Elgin will get the ball with 2.19 left to go. Looks, oh, almost a steal. So Vila got her hand on it, wasn't able to corral it, goes out of bounds. A little lob inside the lane. Oh, over to Merez. She snuck over there in the baseline, lets that one sail, no good, rebounded. Gets the rebound and a foul going up. She'll go to the Hillary Communications free throw opportunity. It's that one to go. Makes it 17. 14 point lead. Second shot also good. A little pushing in. Oh, it's going to be a steal. Fast break opportunity. Anna gets on the defense, puts it up. No good. Rebounded by Fletcher. No whistle, no foul. Back over to Anna with 133 left to go. Crosses the timeline. Backs her way down for a give and go. Stolen by Elgin. Lady Owls with 121 left to go. Looks for the top of the key to Merez. Tipped and out of bounds. Last touched by Fletcher. So Elgin will retain possession. With a buck eight. Outside corner. Looks with 59 to go. Under a minute. Near side looks over. Rez had off balance, was able to save that without going out of bounds. Three ball on the way. Misses the mark, back irons, loose ball, picked up by Elgin. 41 seconds left to go in the lane. Dribbles, tries to get to the low post. Nice save into the hands. Merez gets it up top of the key. Outside corner, three ball on the way and hits it. And a Walters co-op three with a great offensive run late here in this contest to bring it to 21 in a 10-point ball game. 31-21 with the final 19 seconds. And that will be whistled. Out of bounds. Final 15 seconds. Elgin looks to try to even... Get even that score to look a little, a little bit better. A little floater in the lane that hits the front iron. No, it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Fletcher. So Elgin will have one more shot with 5.8 seconds left to go. Try to get this one to rattle in. Merez lets that one sail. Heave ho with two seconds left to go. And that should do it. 31-21 is your final. Fletcher Wildcats beat the Elgin JV Lady Owls to conclude game number two. We've got two games in the winner's bracket, and that's coming up next. We'll take a timeout and be back to action right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1955. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from our best bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Welcome to the Great Plains Coliseum. It's game number three of day three at the Comanche County Tournament, and this is the winner's side of the bracket. J.W. DeSiver, myself, Eric Sherum, going to have a great matchup tonight with Walters and Geronimo. And we're ready. I'll tell you what, this is winner advances to the championship game, 6.30 on Saturday, J.W., and you know it, what this means for each community it's it's a special it's a special week it's a special bragging rights uh, walters uh, our defending champion uh, from last year they look to something to say that we want to establish ourselves as the team to beat anytime you make it to thursday or friday night of the tournament is special you know that you're playing in the winner's bracket for a chance to play for the county championship on saturday night so your heart white funeral home is going to be your first quarter sponsor and the opening tip-off is going to be taken. You would say Geronimo in their baby blues and Walters in their all-whites with blue. Walters lets that one sail for a three-ball just like that and an opportunity at a Walters co-op three-ball. Three and Walters takes the opening shot with a three. That's going to be stolen as the Blue Devils come up with the steal. The first three-point shot contested Geronimo. Gets that back, back into play. Ron balls that around and then finally is going to be picked up. It's going to be over by Henson. Henson gives a little trail back over. And that gets contested by Youngblood, loses it into the hands of Geronimo as Gomez on the right wing. Looks for a little bit of help, top the key. Back over to Huffman. And we'll perimeter pass that between Daly and back to Huffman. Huffman, the sophomore, lets that one sail. Comes up a little bit short, rebound for the Walters Lady Blue Devils. And that's going to step on the line, and that's going to be out of bounds. So Hart Wyatt Funeral Home. For 105 years, families have trusted Hart Wyatt Funeral Home to help them honorable ceremonies and remembrance of their loved ones, 202 East Colorado and Walters. Proud supporters of Walters Blue Devils Sports. We, we found them in football. A little save ball, but it's going to go out of bounds. Both teams seem really, seem really content early to stretch with the outside shot. Not a lot of 
working on inside, trying to get the three ball going early here. Also fast pace, considering our, for their first two ball games. It's going to be outside, underneath, baseline, gets tipped away, but is able to come up with it. Walters with the potential, the Geronimo with a hand with the try to get the steal. Walters eyes the three inside the paint, little floater up, gets the roll, no good, and there's a foul on the way down. And we'll go to the Hillary Communications free throw opportunity for the Walters Ladies Blue Devils and gets the first one to go. As you mentioned last year, Walters defending champions coming off their first Comanche County Tournament Championship in school history for the yeah, girls. I know, and it was something special, but now you see that confidence that they brought in here. Rolls out, misses the opportunity. Score still stays at four. 5.32 left to go in quarter number one. Ger Geronimo with up top. Outside perimeter, back over to Daly. Daly over to Huffman. Huffman looks for a little bit of help. Inside, go to Gomez. Gomez back out, and there's a whistle on the floor. And we'll go to the line shooting, too. Your Hillary Communications with ultra-fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone service. Thousands of customers across Oklahoma benefit from Hillary and their experience. You know, you mentioned Walters. These girls are really having that confidence. Crept into the rankings this week in 2-8, at number 20 at 10-4, and four, so starting to turn some heads throughout the state. Very nice. The Blue Devil squad is. And just think it could have started all a year ago. First points for the Geronimo. Geronimo Blue Jays get on the board with one to make it 4-1. to one. Just underway and a steal, opportunity, fast break, opportunity. Back outside for a three ball on the way. Misses the mark, gets the rebound. Double teamed underneath, jump ball is called. Gets that tied up and what a tall frame is Emma Youngblood, that senior, she's 5'11". Shows a little bit more experience and height on the court. Back outside. That one goes in for a three ball. Walters co-op three ball. That gets us all tied up at four apiece. And a whistle on the floor. So you're used to the other game with a little bit slower pace. This is definitely a lot faster paced ball game. You talk about that man up defense. Let's that one floater go for three. Just like that, you can't let the shooter go uncontested. And she gets three to add a seven to four lead. That's a throw away. Not many fouls. Walters with only one. Geronimo has committed two. Heavily contested right there at the line. Gets around. Looks for a little bit of help. Over to Edmonds. Now into the hands of Henson. Henson right into Youngblood. Youngblood with a turnaround. Inside the paint. No good. Rebounded. Picked up by Geronimo. Gomez. Looks to split the defenders, and then back outside. Oh, and wow, Youngblood gives a hello into the stands, and that got the fans excited. That was a great contest there. Just rejection. Closed out perfectly and was able to send that one back into the Walters bench. <laughs> a little bit of friendly fire there. So they'll regroup. No harm, no foul. Geronimo with the ball. And we got a three second lane violation. So camped in there a little too long and that's gonna be a turnover. So Walters with an opportunity to try to score. Full court press put on by Geronimo. 
Only one lays back past the timeline. They want to see if, if they can get this across, and they do. Working their way, zigzag back and forth from one end of the court to the other. Missed opportunity. Geronimo with the rebound and quickly with Gomez on the attack. Three ball, look on the way. No good. Rebounded by Walters. And here comes the Lady Blue Devils. Down to Youngblood. Stops, pops from 20. No good. Gets the rebound and a foul underneath over the back. Probably going to be on Edmonds with a push. I'll check that. That's going to be on Ed, uh, there's 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 Eggman and Edmonds. So let's not let's not get those all confused. But it's only the second team foul, and that's going to be her first. Gomez crosses the timeline with 3:02 left to go here in the first quarter. The Hart Wyatt Funeral Home first quarter. Into the hands of a steal. Fast break opportunity. Layup coming up. Up and in. Making the opportunity on the steal and the score to make it 9-4. to four. Don't mean to rhyme, but that's how it went. Look for a little bit of help from Huffman. Back out top from Neff. Let's that one sail. Back irons from Huffman is no good. She's just a sophomore. Into the hands of Lady Blue Devils. Cross to the timeline. Outside corner looking for Youngblood. She'll get a little bit of help. Cross pass. Nice underneath dish, but it's just too much. As Eggman was not able to come down with it, but they get the rebound. Little fight for it there is Eggman. And I'll have to call to Devin, and there's Macy. The different first names, last names, back irons, no. And Geronimo, after the missed opportunities for Walters, trying to cut into that 9-4 to four lead with a buck 35. This has been a fast first quarter. Fast pace up and down the court. Only five fouls between the two of them. Bounce pass under inside the lane. Tries to go around the corner is Gomez. Little floater, no good, but a putback by Bowling is up, and there's a whistle and a foul coming. That will send Bowling to the line for your Hillary Communications free throw. Trying to chip away at that Walters lead. Up and in. Brings it back to a four-point contest with a buck 18 left to go here in the first quarter. A little bit of group substitution there for Walters, and if you'll see, the Lady Blue Devils are really deep on the bench compared to just three on the bench for the Geronimo Blue Jays. And that's that's probably going to make a difference down the wire with four quarter, and especially if you're going to rotate. So we'll see how that plays out, but that's a good call. Up to Youngblood. Oh, and they're banging, trying to go in between. and A little bit too much with the body in the hole. That's going to be the fourth foul committed by the Geronimo Lady Blue Jays. That foul is going to be on Huffman. That's going to be her first. Meeson, as we say, now we've got new substitutions. Youngblood still in the ballgame. She tries a little feed at a give and go to Kindly Eggman, the sophomore. Because then there's Macy Eggman, she's the senior. And then there's the Edmund sisters. So Eggman and Edmund. <laughs> Try to follow that one up. There's four of them on the court. There, Youngblood gets fouled. No, just gets brushed out of bounds. So the whistle is the ball goes out. Ring. Back up top. We'll say to Kylie, little floater, gets the little shooter's bounce and the roll to bring it to double digits and into 11. 11 to 5 with the final 33 seconds left to go here. And the first of our winner's bracket 
of girls basketball, the Comanche County Tournament. It's been a fun first quarter so far. A little help from Huffman. Sales out of bounds with 18 seconds left to go on the clock. Substitution coming up from the Walters bench, as you mentioned. It's going to go to Drew Edmonds. She'll replace Youngblood. She'll get a little bit of a breather. She needs it. She's that four-quarter personality. Kind of give and go, try to look for it, and then miss the opportunity. Goes out of bounds, so Walters will get the ball. So Geronimo with an empty opportunity of trying to score with 17 seconds left to go. Play for the final shot. Oh, contested and stolen. Loose ball picked up by Geronimo. Walters with a pickpocket, tries to get from behind, and she'll get too much. She'll get her hand caught in the cookie jar. Give and go, layup a little bit too strong up off the hoop. Loose ball goes out and out of bounds. And the officials will have to talk about who touched that last. They were both undecided about who they're going to call it. They're going to say Geronimo. Walters with a full port. One second, heave ho and a, a throw down court. And it's no good. 11 to 5 after one in the books. The Walters Lady Blue Devils lead. We'll take a timeout. Be back with quarter number two right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from Arvest Bank. Goodbye limits, hello, possibilities. Well, welcome back to the Great Plains Coliseum. Getting ready for quarter number two. Fast and furious first quarter. Young blood, who caught just a small breather in the lane, misses it, then she fights for it, tie up, and jump ball is called. Latimer with a little bit of help from Gomez. Back to Latimer. Rifles passed on the left wing. Down underneath, too congested as bowling had to go up top. Little drive, but there's four in the lane. Had to throw that one out, and a three ball on the way, and is good. Their Walters co-op three ball is good to make this a tighter contest now. Just like that, it's an 11-8 ball game. Just underway here in the start of the second quarter. Bounce pass. Look for a little bit of help underneath, and that's going to give and go off the glass for two is good. So they answer the points with points to get on the board to make it 13-8. What little dish out as she got in there, and I thought she was going to be able to take the layup, but she dished back out, loose ball, picked up, and a whistle on the floor with a foul and the push.
hold, rather. That's going to be on Geronimo. That's going to be their sixth. Daly's going to pick up her second. Drew Edmonds will hold. Back out to Henson. Back over to Edmonds. Edmonds with a little floater inside the lane. No good. Rebound by Youngblood. She puts it back up off the glass for two. That's why she's dangerous. You better try to box her out if you can. 15 to 8. Walters on a run. Underneath, double teamed and trip. Oh, I thought there was going to be a clean strip. But a little bit too much of contact with the swipe and the hack. Geronimo underneath, that's going to be the fourth team foul. That's going to be on Edmonds. That's going to be her second. So she'll probably check out the ball game. She does. She'll be replaced by Ann Dyke. Boy, Walters has got a big bench. Bad away, out of bounds by Macy Eggman, the senior. She swatted that one away. I'm just looking on the floor now. This Lady Blue Devils team wins the height matchup just about in every battle you have. That has helped them so far defensively and on the boards on the offensive and defensive ends. Little three ball on the way, no good. Picked up by Youngblood. Youngblood dishes out. Fast break opportunity, a two-on-one. Up, no, a little bit too shy for Henson. Going to go out of bounds, and Geronimo's going to pick up the ball. 5.33 left to go here in the second quarter. No full court press. Going to let her come down, and they'll let her set up. Back over to Daly. Stripped and stolen. Loose ball on the floor. There's a mad dash for it. Loose ball still picked up. Now Walters comes up with it. Young blood, young blood, double teamed. Back out top. Loses it momentarily behind her back. Back to young blood. Three ball on the way. It's good. Walters three ball for young blood. Makes it an 18 and a 10 point contest. 18 to 8 with 4.55 left to go. Here in the second quarter. Young blood almost tries to. And they said that she must have touched it a little bit. Right there, as I was saying, the past two defensive possessions, just lazy passes have been jumped up and tipped away by the height of the Walters Lady Blue Devils. Swatted away, regains possession, and then there's a hold, and they're going to call that on Young Bull. Youngblood with the hold. That's going to be the fifth for Walters and the first on Youngblood. Still a 10-point lead, 18-8 with 440 left to go. Got a lot of basketball in action. We started at 10 a.m. this morning at the Titan Classic up in Carl Albert. Then at 11 o'clock, we started to do the short grass tournament in Altus. We have this one start at 430. Got a game after this one. And then also Bravado TV has got a tournament in southeast Oklahoma. So you got basketball, we've got it for you. Turn around in the lane. Bank is open. That's good for bowling. Gets to double digits for Geronimo and brings the score in within eight. Loose ball. Mad dash for it. Still no control. Mad dash for it again. And Geronimo picks it up. Loose ball. Opportunity. Trails. Oh, and then a reach in by King is going to be a foul. That will get both teams at six fouls, just one away from one the away. bonus. One yeah. away, It's going to be on King, her first, team sixth. Kenley Eggman will check back in the ball game, and she will place Henson. He's picked up that foul. Coach really cognizant of what's going on with the bench. And a little stutter step and an extra motion, and a traveling is called. Well, this is a much fast-paced game considering the first two that we were here. Double teamed. Youngblood crosses the timeline. Cross court. Back over to King. Little floater inside the lane. Up and in is good for two. 
and that brings it to 20 and back to a 10-point lead. 20 to 10 with 3.33 left to go here in the second quarter. Back up from Gomez. Cross-court pass. Back over into King or Bowling. Back out to Gomez. Gomez will get all the help from Neff. Back to Gomez. Three minutes left to go before the half. Ten-point Walters lead Geronimo with a NBA range three ball. Hits the front of the rim. Youngblood guards, protects, makes sure it goes out of bounds. We've talked about this. The three point lines that are on this court is confusing to a player because the high arc is the NBA, the red mark is the college, and the regular black on the right where it should be is high school. And most of them are shooting at college or NBA, and and that can throw you off because that's not your rhythm in a gym, you know. Goes off the mark with 2.48 left to go. Still a 10-point lead. Also mentioned the shooting, while it might not be a big arena or a coliseum, a little bit more open air than you're usually used to in a high school gymnasium. So that also throws off the shooter's line of sight with the goal. Yeah, the perception, you can't see the backboard. Yeah, it's just kind of a different, you know, and I guess you get used to it playing in a county tournament, but still not something all the time. Let's that one go for a three ball off the mark. No good. Rebound wasn't able to come up. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Geronimo. Walters with the possession. And King will inbounds for the Walters Blue Devils. Crosses the timeline. It's Kinley. She'll get it. Ooh, a little bang in there on tough no call. Ball goes out of bounds, whistled. Geronimo in there, powder blue. Walters and they're all white with blue. Bounce pass over to Eggman. Stripped and stolen by Gomez. On the other end of the floor coming up, up off the glass, gets the shooter's roll and that's good for two to chip into that lead to make it an eight point lead. With 1.53 left to go and a travel is called. So Meeson and she'll be immediately replaced, and, you know, and she'll get a talking to from Coach. And you know, Eric, that was one of the points of emphasis that the National Federation put out before the season this year was watching the zero step and the drag of the back foot for the referees. So Gomez back over to Huffman. Let's that one sail, and just like that, an opportunity really chipping away at that lead with back-to-back -back points and a four-point swing. Walters crosses the timeline. Back up top for Dyke. Back over to Youngblood. Back to King. King to Youngblood. Back outside. Looks for the baseline. Loses her position, defense comes across, present, prevents that from an easy bucket. Youngblood inside the lane, Sir, oh, tries to split the defenders, no foul, ball goes out of bounds, but last touch by Geronimo. So Walters will retain possession with a buck six left to go before the half. Underneath, that's uh, gonna be over the back. Bowling with the body. That's going to be into the bonus now for seven. That's going to be her second. The Geronimo faithful were sure to voice their displeasure with that call. <laughs> At the free throw line from the Hillary Communications free throw, up and in. And you know, Eric, the mentioning the National Federation, they actually had an emergency meeting Tuesday to talk about the treatment and mistreatment of officials. Uh, nice article by Joey Goodman yeah. in the Constitution today talking about that. You know, his back iron's no good. It's been really good for this tournament all week long. There's not been anything that's that I could really say was drawn to attention. 
goes baseline. Well, you know, they're also lacking officials too. Yeah. And so who wants to get into this arena if that's how you're going to get treated, you know? So I understand, especially a lot of the old guards retired. They, they've done a lot of years. There's not been a lot of young guys. That's going to be a travel. Took the extra step, but there's two defenders in front of her, so you understand she had to really know where to go. 21 to 14, Geronimo still hacking away at this. To a seven point lead, which was up by 10 just moments ago with 40 seconds left to go. Geronimo look for a three ball off the mark. Young Blood with the rebound. 31 seconds. She's trapped by three defenders. Gets a little bit of help, but has to throw that one away. Off balance, and Edmonds could not come down with it, so Geronimo. We'll get a timeout is called. So a 30-second timeout, we'll take it with him. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A better design, flowers and gifts is under new ownership. And we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. All right, welcome back to the Great Plains Coliseum. Fast and furious for the first round of the winner advances to the finals of the county tournament for the girls. Walters with a 21-14 lead with 26 seconds left to go. Gets trapped by two defenders. 14 seconds left to go. Still playing for that shot. Latimer down to seven seconds. Loose ball picked up by Youngblood. Two on one, fast break, layup coming up, up and in. And that will be at the buzzer. What a great opportunity for Walters to put the stamp of, no you don't, 23 to 14. And we are at the half. We'll be back with halftime and second half action right after this as you're watching the Comanche County Basketball Tournament right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. We're growing and changing to serve you better. Until then, we're making room and reducing inventory. During our Billingsley Hyundai construction sale, expanding to serve you better. That's the Billingsley way. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Bridges. And I'm Dr. Nathan Buckner. Did you know our dental practice is one of only 6% of practices in the United States that provide care from an all digital platform? We fabricate crowns, bridges, and place implants with advanced digital technology. If you want to be part of this digital revolution in dental care, call us today at 248-6700 or visit our website at bridgesandbugnerdentistry.com. We look forward to providing you with exceptional dental care. The future is here at Comanche County Memorial Hospital with the first and only Da Vinci surgical robot 
The expertise of our compassionate surgeons combined with this leading technology allows for smaller incisions and a quicker recovery with increased accuracy for a number of surgical needs. Get back into your life's routine faster. Your community hospital, our family caring for yours. When I'm flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am. Whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female, you just know I'm an American Airman kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown, Jr. Come join us. Coast Technology Group helps you feel safe and secure utilizing simple, reliable technology. Allow our team of experts to help you design the right system with high-definition surveillance cameras, cutting-edge smart alarm systems, and thoughtfully designed access control for your home or business. Work, sleep, and play with confidence, knowing CTG is your technology partner. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. Feet. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate.
fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Welcome to the winner's bracket of the first of the two with Walters and Geronimo and Chattanooga and Sterling. And we're already just like that from halftime ready to start. Arvest Bank third quarter. Walters going to go out quickly. Bounce pass and a little extra step and a travel. Our best bank, committed to the communities they serve, providing a full range of financial services to both individuals and businesses. Manage your accounts anywhere with online and mobile banking. Member FDIC, Our Best Bank, your third quarter sponsor. Winner advances to the finals for Saturday, 6.30 for the girls. Glad you could join us here. Some young lady was helping me out with the names because I know that there's good families watching, <laughs> making sure that I get this right. I said, it's hard. Names are very similar, and their sisters on the bench. But Walters with a full court press from Geronimo. Gets it across the timeline, will he? Or he'll have to call uh, timeout. timeout. He had to call timeout. It was instantly for that 10 seconds. So we'll take it with him. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. growing and changing to serve you better. Until then, we're making room and reducing inventory during our Billingsley Hyundai construction sale, expanding to serve you better. That's the Billingsley way. All right, so back is a quick timeout for the, we're gonna make sure they don't get the 10 second timeline. Your Arbus Bank third quarter at 7.09. It's a 23 to 14 Walters lead. Going to go back up top. A little perimeter shooting. Young Blood tries to find the open. A little fade away. Yes. Up and in for Macy. We'll just go by first names. How about that? to make it 25. 11 point contest. Geronimo's fighters though. Tries to get that baseline with that Latimer. Outside three ball on the way is good. It's the Walters co-op three ball. And Geronimo's not going away. Makes it 17. Tie up and there is going to be a jump ball called. And the possession arrow is coming back this way to Geronimo. This is a really scrappy Geronimo group. Just refuses to go away in this ball game. But every time they get a little bit close, then Walters kind of just separates. And that's what it's been the last two runs. We'll see what Geronimo can do after halftime and any kind of adjustments that they made. 6.08 left to go here in the third quarter. Down underneath. Little throw away. Trying to get into Huffman. And then it's re-stolen. Back on the other way, and there's going to be a blocking foul. Tried to position, but her feet were moving as Henson. I think Henson's going to pick up her third. Is that going to be? No, that's only her first. So I'm 
Got her must have convinced with someone else. Her first team first. And at the Hillary Communications free throw line, the Geronimo Lady Blue Jays. Back irons, no. Boy, you like to have that. And in her earlier game, Fletcher really connected with their free throws. Really did well. Made a difference in a 31-21 game over the Elgin JV team. Misses both, but gets her own rebound, though. Got to box her out, but then stripped and stolen. Here comes the Lady Blue Devils. Looks for an opportunity. Back up. Three ball on the way. No good. And there's a foul with a hold coming back on the push with the rebound. And Walters, just like that, is going to pick up their second. That's going to be on Young Blood. That's going to be her second. So Huffman, Mackenzie Huffman, over to Daly. Bounce pass over here to Latimer. Tied up, fakes the three. Outside perimeter, bounce pass, goes out of bounds, but it's going to be last touched by Walters. So Geronimo will retain possession with 5.20 left to go here in this third quarter. Walters doing a really good job here in this 2-3 zone. Only an eight-point lead. Scrappy around, Geronimo comes up with it after a potential steal by Walters. Bounce pass corner, ball on the way. Front irons, no good, loose ball, picked up and there is a foul call. Geronimo faithful didn't like that, they're gonna call that on Huffman, that's gonna be her second and the team second. You see Walters doing a really good job with the defensive rotations there. It's easy to get lazy in a 2-3 zone, they did a great job. Rotate into the backside there. Stolen by Geronimo, coming back the other way. Three ball on the way. Hits the front iron, no good. Rebounded by Walters. Oh, stolen by Geronimo. Puts it up on a quick back iron, no good. Rebounded, another opportunity of the boards, and Geronimo comes up with a score. That's a really good pass by Huffman right there. Didn't get too excited and want to take the shot. Found the open teammate. Makes it a 25-19 score. Within seven. Remember, this was well over 10 points at one time for Walters. Slowing it up just a little bit. Up tempo, just passing perimeter, back up top. Waiting to engage. This style of basketball definitely favors the Lady Blue Devils here. Just playing keep away. And gets them out of the momentum of that quick strike because Geronimo has been really Attacking, attacking. Not the four minute mark, still passing. You almost take a minute off this clock by doing this. Young Blood in lane, gets that st stripped, loose ball picked up by Walters. Opportunity was still with the ball. Outside, eyes the three. Young Blood in the lane, turn around, in, no, good. And a whistle. Going to be and a foul on Walters. You know, and possessions like that, Eric, has really sparked the hot button topic debate whether Oklahoma should go to a shot clock. Yeah. I've seen a lot of debate between the media, coaches, athletic directors, and even the Oklahoma Secondary Sports Activity Association about the possibility of maybe implementing a shot clock. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, uh, you know, I think it makes sense. It makes the games go a lot faster. I, I don't really see, like, in this game, outside of that little stretch right there, there's not really been a lot of stall ball at all. No, not at all. So three fouls now by Walters. Geronimo with the ball. Down 25-19 with 3.22 left to go here in the third. Rifles that. Looks for try to get a give and go. And outside back out to Gomez Gomez splits the defenders little floater in the air no good gets a rebound puts it up and in so the bucket counts and just like that a five-point game and going to the line for the three and that silenced the Walters crowd and the Hillary free throw opportunity yeah. 
up and in. And don't look now, it is a three-point game. 25-22. So Geronimo keeps attacking. Walters, Youngblood on the defense. Oh, and it hits in her face, but she's able to get it. And there is a timeout called by Walters. Walters calls timeout. We'll take it with him. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. Walters coach with a quick timeout. And just like that, we got a three point contest. Now, worth noting is the 10 second count that was originally started will follow them after the timeout. So, we need to make sure to get the ball over quick, as you'll not have the full 10 seconds to advance the ball into the front court here for the Walters Lady Blue Devils. Well, I hope you strapped yourselves in for some great wire to wire basketball with this one. And we've got another one coming up right after this with Chattanooga and Sterling to conclude the night. Loose ball, and it is going to be out of bounds. So Geronimo stepped on the line, and Walters and the Lady Blue Devils going to be able to take it out from underneath. Hand off to Dyke. Outside corner on the way, three ball, no good. Youngblood, and she gets fouled. She tries to go back up, and she'll go to the line shooting too. And someone's got to get a body on Youngblood down there, or she will kill you all game with the second chance points as she has done so far here tonight. Here, Hillary Communications free throw. Up and in. Back to a four-point contest. Walters was up by 10 at one point. Geronimo has chipped away with that, and now we're back to a five-point fall game. Got half of that back to make it 27-22. Cross to the timeline with two and a half to go in the third. Looks to drive outside. Looks for a little bit of help. Huffman. Back over to Gomez. Latimer this gets deflected, and there is a loose ball foul call. It's going to be a foul on Daly. That's going to be her third. So Daly It's going to be the team third. Going to try to go end to end. She stops right in the lane, goes high up off the glass. Youngblood with the rebound, puts it, stretches that out with a long stretch ream outside the glass, goes out of bounds. She leaned away from those two defenders. Looks, oh, took the extra step. So Ann Dyke took the one extra. It's whistled with the turnover, and Geronimo with an opportunity to try to dip into this lead. Back up top by Gomez. Back out to Latimer. Oh, and then a tip, tip and stolen by Meeson. Meeson, coast to coast, up and in for two to bring it to 29. Good defensive Strike and score. Almost gets another one on the opportunity. Let's that one sail for a three ball. Back irons, loose ball, picked up by Bowling. Bowling back over to Gomez. Let's that one sail, loose ball. 
picked up and a jump ball is called. And the possession arrow is going the other way. Walters will regain the possession with a buck eight left to go at the end of the third quarter. It's been a fun one, and we're not finished. Full slate of basketball all day long. And Dyke back over to Devin. It's Edmonds. We're going to pass a little bit over back to Meeson. She lets that sail for a Walters co-op three ball. And just like that, they're on a good run. And they're back up to a 10-point lead. But we're going to answer points with points. And coming back on the other end, the chip away back to eight. With a steal, he says, what happens? Every time there's a run, come back around and a steal, coming back the other way with Walters. Up, off the glass, a little bit too high. Gets the great rebound is Meeson. Looks to the corner, little floater from the baseline and the bucket's gonna count. That's the way to do it. Go to the line. They're going to say the bucket does not count. I thought that was going to be so. It's going to be a foul on the and the act of shooting. No, it is bucket counts. That's what I thought his motion was. They finally got the score table to go do that. And Hillary Communications free throw opportunity. Back to an 11-point lead. Back within. Just like that, down to three seconds, two, one. Will they get it off in time? No. 35-24 after three quarters of play, Walters leads. We'll be back with the fourth and final period right after this. You're watching the Comanche County Basketball Tournament on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1950. I think the story has been every time Geronimo would try to get this a game, Walters just takes off. So, I mean, you get it within four, and then you look up, and you're back up by 10 or 11 points. And that just speaks to the the veteran leadership shown on this Walters team. Fourth quarter is brought to you by Eastside Pharmacy. Eastside Pharmacy, count on their personal attention, provided by their caring professional staff, expertly trained pharmacists, friendly staff pride themselves on making sure your pharmacy experience exceeds expectations. Visit them today, experience the Eastside Pharmacy difference, 3612 Southeast Lee Boulevard. Steal opportunity, a miss opportunity for Geronimo, and a travel is called. That's what you didn't like after you get that on Kayla Meeson. So you keep Geronimo in striking distance when you give him opportunities like that. Loose ball picked up by Walters. And a whistle on the floor. Don't forget, at the conclusion of this contest, one more in the books. Chattanooga and Sterling with the rights to take on the winner of this contest. 
Loser will go to the third place at Saturday at 2 o'clock. Puts that one up and a whistle on the floor. Geronimo crosses the timeline as Huffman trapped with a double team on the line. Gets that one out. Back up top to Huffman. Huffman with a little help to Gomez. Gomez will look. Near side. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Geronimo. So Walters with the possession arrow. It's 7.09. Waiting to punch their way into the finals. Little streak. Oh, nice pass underneath, up and good. Walters extending their lead. Gomez back over. Off for Latimer. Into the hands of the Walters Lady Blue Devils. Looks for the senior for Kinley, the sophomore, gets it up for two to make it 39. And a little runaway now for Walters. Gomez for NBA three off the mark. Walters with a rebound. Notice two young bloods not on the floor right now, giving her a little bit of a rest. You know, to win these tournaments, you want to come back on Saturday, too, you know. That play slowed down just a little bit. Slowing the pace, milking the clock. Inside. Kinley. She'll go to the line. And earlier, not to raise any alarm, I'd seen Youngblood run back behind the curtains here at the Coliseum at that end. Don't know what that's about. Okay, so let me check it on her, boy. That's the, really going to need need her down the stretch, especially in the finals. <clears throat> Brings it to 40 now. Second shot rattles in. 41-24. Walters. As yeah, Eric, Youngblood is, Young is currently not sitting on the Lady Blue okay. Devil bench. Okay. Definitely keep an eye on that one. That would be a big loss for Walters. Come uh, travel. Took an extra step. Hopefully everything's okay with her. Timeout is called by Geronimo. They take one, we'll take one with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from Arvest Bank. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. All right, back after the quick timeout by Geronimo. 30 seconds left to go. We've been kind of keeping an eye on Miss Youngblood, who, as you said, went out, went behind the curtains, and we've not seen her since. You know what I think it is? I think it's a jersey change. Is she wearing number 50? She's wearing 50 now. You are correct. Yeah, so that's what it was. Something with her jersey, she's not wearing 25 anymore, but I recognize the style of what she is and who she is. When you, when you play hard like she does, you know, 
Something happened either Some, tour, tour or, you know, or yeah, you know. yeah, some, something. I know the officials, especially, are real picky on blood on the uniform, making sure yeah, yeah. it can either get cleaned off or you got to change. And Hillary Communications free throw opportunity. Missed to the opportunity coming up. Second shot is good. 42-24. Final 5-13 left to go here in the fourth and final period. Little floater on the run, on the move. No. Bounces around. Walters with the rebound. Quickly down the floor. That would also explain why the Walters bookkeeper made a long walk over to the scorer's table before <laughs> yeah. number 50 checked into the game. Yeah. Gets stopped inside. Little handoff to Dyke is good. Just kind of patiently just doing what they need to, adding the points to make it a 20-point lead, the largest tonight by Walters, 44-24. to Trying to regroup something for Geronimo. A heave-ho and a let-go for Huffman, and that ball goes out of bounds, last touched by Walters. The Lady Blue Jays have just gone ice cold here in the second half. Yep. DeLuke will come in for Geronimo. First time we've seen her tonight. Geronimo to look to inbounds. Gets that deflected. Bodies kind of collide. No whistle. Picked up by Walters and Youngblood. Almost stolen. Back out. Youngblood looks for a lot of opportunity. Rifle pass. Oh, that's nice. Boy, just, just really good working as Macy gets in for a bucket. As Edgman gets to 46, 24. They can kind of go on cruise control right now for Walters. They're not, but I mean they could. Little floater by Gomez. Up and in for two is good. And this should have been great ball movement here in this fourth quarter by the Lady Blue Devils, multiple passes each time down the floor to find the open scorer. And there's going to be a tie-up for a jump ball as Gomez battles it out for Youngblood. And what I like about this Walters offensive set right now is they're passing the ball and taking time off the clock, but also not afraid when they see the open Blue Devil to throw it inside and score the bucket as well, kind of pushing the gas pedal and hitting the brakes at the same time, playing the best of both worlds. And Youngblood will hold, play a little bit of pass perimeter stall ball. Kind of working it around, back up to Youngblood, back outside, bounce pass, same thing. Looks for that shot, but there was four defenders. Two on one side, two on the other, loose ball, kicked around, picked up by Walters, 255, and milking the clock. Geronimo still playing aggressive. Inside, oh, there it is. That's when she Macy just finds her little connection that she needs to bring it to 48. This was down to a four-point contest at one point. Big group substitution coming in for the late levels here. Yeah, probably play these last yeah. couple of minutes because you know you you want to save them for a Saturday yeah. game. A little fast break opportunity, a little easy layup up and in. Also a chance to That brings it to 50, and there is the exit for the five. And a new five in for Walters. That's good to give a curtain call to these. Good bench. Yep. Good game. Ladies, take a breather. Root on your bench players. Round for bowling, no good. Put back up by Laloop is no good, but then a steal, and that rims in and out, so Geronimo can't get one to fall, and then there's a loose ball and a foul on the floor. That's going to be on Geronimo. It's going to be 
One and one with the other end. On Gomez, that's going to be her third. Yep, putting them in the bonus from here on out. Your Hillary Communications free throw. Your charity strike. Opportunity for the Walters Ladies Blue Devils. And, Wal and in. Walters will hang everybody back here and get set up on defense except for the free throw shooter. Second shot coming up. Don't forget, we have one more game after this, so don't go anywhere. Misses that one. We've got Chattanooga and Sterling coming up in the finality of day number three for girls basketball. Foul and going to the line, shooting two for Miss Gomez. You know, this is such a great event, for, and all these small towns look forward to it every year. Showing up. You get the whole town come out to the county tournament and support their boys and girls teams. Hillary Communications free throw. Ultra fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone service. 529-5000 or go online. Check them out on their website to bring it to 27 with the free throw good. Readjust after she loses it momentarily. Loose ball picked up with a rebound, and there's a jump ball called. Jump ball. And the possession arrow is going back the other way. So Geronimo will get the possession with a buck 36 left to go. Just a formality as the Walters Lady Blue Devils, defending champions of last year's tournament for the first time in school history, will be back to try to repeat. And they will try to face the winner of, well, they'll take on the winner of Chattanooga and Sterling, the game coming up. Three ball opportunity, missed opportunity, loose ball, goes out of bounds. The last touched by Geronimo with a buck 18. So, unless you really, well, we are going to play, we're going to play full court defense here with a steal momentarily. Put back up, loose ball, bodies collide, and there's a whistle. The Lady Blue Devils are going to get a chance to defend. Yeah. Their Comanche County tournament title. Foul's going to be on Ottavio. It's her first. Team seventh put them in the bonus for the Hillary Communications free throw. Shot is up and good. 51-28. With a buck 11 left to go. Your east side pharmacy fourth quarter. Here at the Comanche County Tournament, day number three. Four girls games, three will be in the books, one to go. For the finality on a Thursday night, guys will be in action. Starting at 4.30 tomorrow for Friday's matchups. Loose ball on the floor, picked up with 59 seconds left to go. Gomez goes coast to coast, up on the other end. Loose ball again, picked up by Walters, then stolen by Gomez. Boy, she steals that just in time for a jump ball. What hustle that she, she have. She's just a junior, too. She's coming back next year. And that's one thing you can't coach is hustle. Down to 37 seconds left to go. Yeah, Geronimo's, they don't know what the score is. They don't care. They're playing the final seconds. Down to 29. Now we'll play a little bit of keep away. It's King. A little bounce pass back up to King. Down to 16 seconds. Really don't need to do anything here. Unless there's not a call to 12 seconds. Gets that one down underneath, up and misses. Opportunity of five seconds, and that's going to go out of bounds. <laughs> Last touched by Geronimo. So Walters will still regain possession with three and a half to go. Just let this one go and call it a night. Bounce pass, one, and that should do it. That is your final, 51 to 28. Walters Lady Blue Devils punch their ticket to the finals to take on the winner of Chattanooga and Sterling. That game is coming up, so we'll take a timeout and be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A Better Design Flowers and Gifts is under new ownership, and we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoma, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you.
Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. We're growing and changing to serve you better. Until then, we're making room and reducing inventory. During our Billingsley Hyundai construction sale, expanding to serve you better. That's the Billingsley way. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Bridges. And I'm Dr. Nathan Buckner. Did you know our dental practice is one of only 6% of practices in the United States that provide care from an all-digital platform? We fabricate crowns, bridges, and place implants with advanced digital technology. If you want to be part of this digital revolution in dental care, call us today at 248-6700 or visit our website at bridgesandbugnerdentistry.com. We look forward to providing you with exceptional dental care. The future is here at Comanche County Memorial Hospital with the first and only Da Vinci Surgical Robot. The expertise of our compassionate surgeons combined with this leading technology allows for smaller incisions and a quicker recovery with increased accuracy for a number of surgical needs. Get back into your life's routine faster. Your community hospital, our family caring for yours. Well, it's the final matchup of the fourth game of the four games that we've had. It's Chattanooga and Sterling, and the winner will advance to play in the finals on Saturday. So it should be a good one. We're bringing it to you live here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. First quarter sponsor is brought to you by Hart Wyatt Funeral Home. Dedicated to providing services to the families of Temple, Walters, Cotton County, and Southwest Oklahoma with care, compassion, and professionalism. For 105 years, families have trusted Hart Wyatt Funeral Home to help them honorable memories, and ceremonies, and remembrance of their loved ones, 202 East Colorado in Walters. Chattanooga comes in this one at 12 and 5, ranked 18th in Class B. And the Sterling Leader Tigers come in at 15 and 4, but yet unranked in a tough Class A. Yeah. Well, this is where you get your momentum, your mojo going into the final part of your regular season before you start thinking about the state run. Getting into districts, area, regionals, all the rest of that. And the pecking order, and, and you get four tournaments a, a team will get, and you get to play most of those during the holiday break. And now and we're going to tip it off. And Sterling will be in their dark black with an orange-colored code and Chattanooga in all white. And the opening tip is going to be taken by Sterling. Just like the first game, a fast-paced Moving the ball around, trying to get out underneath. Boy, a little throwaway as Mansell got a little bit contested. Little drive up and then put back up is good for two. And just like that, Chattanooga scores with a two-point lead. 
Back for an open look for Spence. No good off the rim, but then stolen after the rebound by Clift. Back up top for a three ball, no good. Loose ball, picked up, stolen by Chattanooga, and she kind of runs out of real estate, but she gets the blocking call. She tries to get around the edge. As you see, this Chattanooga Warriors team almost instantly come into the trap, trying to speed up the game, which is what we've seen a lot of earlier in the walters Geronimo matchup. Chattanooga with the extra, and I'll tell you what, just the extra momentum by Castle. Able to put that in and just like that, have a 4-0 run as Chattanooga leads over Sterling. A lot of moving here from this Chattanooga team. You've seen them run almost a series of four or five straight dribble handoffs before finally going, and here they go again. Madeline Burns bounce pass to Michaela Burns. A little give and go back underneath. She snuck around as Castle gets up and just like that, it's a 6-0 run where Chattanooga leads. Back underneath, that's what you get. The low post underneath is Mansell. Gets on the board for the first time for Sterling. And the Lighty Tigers finally get on the board after the Two minutes almost eclipsed off of the first quarter. Thanks for joining us on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and on our network by downloading us on our Apple and Android devices. Also at home, Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. It's been a long day. Started at 10 o'clock this morning with the Titan Classic that went all day long. Eight games in action between the boys and girls. And the Altus short, glass, short grass started at 11 o'clock, and that game's were all afternoon long. Stealing by Chattanooga's giveaway, trying to go coast to coast, and she gets caught up in the wash and the defense and a whistle on the floor. Both teams have picked up one, one personal foul, one team foul. In the lane is the little give and go, and then rattles in and out. So unfortunately for Sterling doesn't get the roll. Chattanooga quickly with the rebound. Burns back outside. Three ball on the way. Rattles in and out. And rebound by Clift from Sterling. Lady Tigers cross the timeline. There's three defenders there, almost stolen. Look for an opportunity, puts that up kind of inerrant, but then underneath with the rebound for Mansell. And there's a whistle on the floor. Going to be picked up by Chattanooga. Gibbons going to be charged with her first. Sterling with the three ball on the way, misses the mark underneath, hits the net. Loose ball, a dive for it, and a jump ball is called. So the possession arrow will switch ends of the floor, and Chattanooga. We'll get the possession with a four-point lead, 6-2 with 5.01 left to go here in the first quarter. Bounce pass over to Castle. Down below trying to get over to Burns, and that goes out of bounds. Last touched by Sterling. So Chattanooga with the ball underneath. Oh, and that was kind of loose. Loses that. Loose ball stolen. Good ball skills, loses it, stolen there, and then a reach in. So Chattanooga with the steal, Sterling with the foul, with a push. So Chattanooga. Slowly comes down the floor into the hands of Gibbons. Gibbons will be right there. She's got a nice neon green shoes, a little high, and then she goes in, tries to split the defenders, and she's fouled all the way in.
So Timber Gibbons, the sophomore, to the Hillary free throw charity stripe, rolls in and out. Follows on Mansell, that's going to be her first, team third, or team second, rather. No, it is their third. Second shot is up and good. Extend that lead to seven. Looking for an opportunity underneath. Oh, he loses it, gets back. Decides to put it back up. Just like that, chip away at the lead to seven to four. Off the mark, lets that one fail by Gibbons. And it goes out of bounds. So that's Michaela Burns. She was at the free throw line. Michaela Burns is 33 and 23. Got to make sure I get her names right. Givens, and then she is back out and goes out of bounds. And Burns will go out for Chattanooga. Sterling with an opportunity to try to cut into this lead. Ooh, almost rifled pass right out of the hands of Clift. But she's able to handle it. Back over to Spence. And a whistle. The ball sails out of bounds. Madeline Burns will check back in the ball game. She'll replace Timber Gibbons. Morgan Curry. I always wonder how they're trying to get that low post down to Mansell and Kinley not able. She's got a six foot frame, so you want to use that when you can. Yeah, Mansell has scored both the buckets tonight for the Tigers down low. Oh, charge. Yeah. Got called for a moving screen right there. Oh. And a timeout will be called. No. Just going to have a little clarification. Thought the coach was wanting to have a little bit more from Sterling. 7-4 seven four, seven four Chattanooga lead. As Garrett moves in double dribble and a travel violation. So Sterling will try to see if they can cut this lead even more. They're going to go up and just coast to coast, up off the glass for two. You can't let that so easily happen, and we're a one-point lead, 7-6. Oh, nice little block, and that was just a clean swipe by Kinley Mansell. Oh, and she'll just throw that and go out of bounds. So, As you will hear Mansell's name a lot in this ballgame. Has a really impactful presence on both ends of the floor for the Lady Tigers. 2.30 remain here in quarter number one. A one-point lead by Chattanooga, who had the get-go run, but Sterling kind of settled the mirrors down. They get a steal here, and now they have a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. Give and go. There it is. Mansell up and in. There you got. That's what you want. And they take the lead by one, eight to seven. Chattanooga comes back, and then another block coming down. That's going to be with the body, though. That's going to be their fifth and her second. And that's dangerous here early. Only six minutes into this ball game, and your star player already has two. Two already, yeah. Coach will leave her in right now. If you're Hillary. Communications. Here's free you. throw. Providing ultra fast broadband, digital cable, and telephone service. Call 580-529-5000. Mansell's made way to the bench for a sit down here early. 
Already in foul trouble. Yeah. Thought that was coming after. Want to make sure there's nothing there. So we're back to a, now a tie ball game, 8-8, eight to eight, with two minutes left to go here in quarter number one. Your Hart Wyatt Funeral Home first quarter. Readjust, crosses the timeline. That's going to be a throwaway. Steal by Chattanooga. Quickly down the floor. Up. Puts it up, and there is going to be a whistle on the floor. That'll be on the Lady Warriors. That foul is going to be on Riley Garrett. That's going to be her first. Shelby Spence crosses the timeline, and now another whistle. So they're really how tight they're playing it. They're calling it tighter with a push. Oh, wow, that's good. A little swat away. That's good hustle, good defense. Oh, she eyed it. She wanted it. Had second thoughts. Heave ho from the other side. And we're going to say it's a three ball. The Walters co-op three ball is good. To bring Sterling back in the lead. 11 to 8. Loose ball. Fight for it. Timeout called. And a timeout is called by Chattanooga. Quick on the coach. She'll take one. As Sterling calls the timeout, we'll take a timeout with him right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. The future is here at Comanche County Memorial Hospital with the first and only Da Vinci surgical robot. The expertise of our compassionate surgeons combined with this leading technology allows for smaller incisions and a quicker recovery with increased accuracy for a number of surgical needs. Get back into your life's routine faster. Your community hospital, our family caring for yours. So back to action after a quick Sterling timeout. Steele, Chattanooga with a missed opportunity at a great free layup. Eyes the NBA rank three with 57 seconds left to go. Chattanooga trying to tie or bring it within one. Nice little scoop skyrocket with a sky hook that's no good. But a full court press, and there we're going to be a foul there. That'll bring both teams' foul totals. It's going to be foul on Timber Gibbons. Bring both the foul total of five for both teams here early on. Yep, that's going to be Gibbons' second. Down to final 36 seconds left to go. Sterling with the lead with the ball. Steal by Gibbons. Chattanooga on the way. Oh, yeah, she's going to be fouled on the way in. She'll go to the line shooting, too. Hillary Communications. Charity Stripe with fast broadband digital cable. Serving thousands of customers across the great state of Oklahoma. Misses the first. Well, you got to make these. They're so important, so vital. Trying to bring it within a bucket and does. Nine to 11. Sterling with a one bucket lead with 22 seconds left to go. Chattanooga with the full defense. And it's like Wyatt got a hand on it, went out of bounds. Chattanooga with the last opportunity to try to score, to try to make this a tie ball game after one. Down to 12 seconds. Back up top of the key with seven seconds. 
inside the lane, and they're going to say a charge is called. So she planted her feet just in time. And Burns was called with a foul. That's going to be sixth, her second. Five seconds remain. Cross to the timeline with Thor. Two down to one, and that's going to be out. And that's going to end the first quarter. 11 to nine after one quarter in the books. We'll come back with the second quarter right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. I'm flying. I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know I'm an American Airman kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown Jr. Come join us. Welcome back to the Great Plains Coliseum, our fourth and final game of the night. We've had four ball games starting at 4.30 this afternoon with Big Pasture over India Home of 42 to 27. Fletcher beat Elgin JV, and Walters advances with their win over Geronimo, and this one a great one, Chatty and Sterling. Down the trip we go. So we're into the bonus now. Sterling will be for the remainder of the half. And your Hillary Communications free throw opportunity. Chattanooga puts that up. Back iron's no good. So you missed the opportunity. There's free throws. It's so important. Can't. You can't stress it enough, and I know coaches do, so it's not like something they don't practice. Loose ball stolen. Chattanooga with a free break. Opportunity and up and in is good. And just like that, we are all tied up at 11 apiece. Start second quarter action. Loose ball. Walters really, I mean Walters. I mean, Chattanooga really scrappy. Just loose balls, throwing their bodies around there. And, you know, Sterling tries to get into a rhythm, and you can say that they're not in that rhythm yet. And that's because Chattanooga has really disrupted that. Hats off to the game plan for Chattanooga and the Lady Warriors. Wyatt outside. Looks for a little help. Give it to Castle. Back up top to Fisher. Got a new, a lot of substitutions coming in and loose ball, and that's going to go out of bounds. So going to get another opportunity to set this up for Chatty. All tied up at 11 apiece. To Wyatt, just a freshman. Back over to Wolf. Wolf has contested a little bit with a deflection from Curry. Tries to go down below underneath to Burns. And that is an inerrant pass, goes out of bounds. And last touch by Chattanooga. Chattanooga started uh, the lead with the get go. Sterling the inbounds from underneath. Spence looks, goes back door, <laughs> layup, no good. Loose ball picked up by Chattanooga, and there's a foul. On, oh, a jump ball is called on the rebound in the loose ball. So possession will stay with Chattanooga. All tied up at 11 apiece. Winner will advance to play Walters in the championship on Saturday at 6.30. Guys, full slate of games starting tomorrow at 4.30. Those who will punch their ticket to the consolation round and then the evening matchups for the finals. Nice turnaround 
jumper in the lane with a hook shot, and it goes no good. Rebound, bounced around, and then last touch by Chattanooga out of bounds. So. That play right there just attests to the scrapping issue you were mentioning, Eric. Just tips it loose, and then no second thought to dive on the floor after that one. Down to six minutes left to go before the half. A little trap there at the top of the baseline, and a travel is called. Well, here's your opportunity if you're Chattanooga. Take advantage, not only of free throws, but an opportunity of coming down on this end of the floor. In games like this are interesting, Eric, because it's a battle of two styles of basketball. Chattanooga's playing fast quick as you can, and then you have Sterling who wants to slow it down and set it up. We'll see yes. which style prevails here. Burns, yes, nice, oh, nice little drive to the hoop, and yes, Burns gets the bounce. And they regain the lead for the first time in a while to bring it 13 to 11, Chattanooga with a one bucket lead. Collision right there at the line. Crosses the timeline. Spence puts it up. I'm gonna say a charge is called. So Spence called with the second Burns looks for a little bit of help. Floater for Burns. It's back over. So it's Burns to Burns combination. Missed opportunity, but man, scrappy again. Look at Timber Gibbons right there. Even though she doesn't have a big frame, she's only 5-1, but man, she's got hustle. Up high off the glass, and a charge is called again. Spence with back-to-back -back charging. And that's going to be her third. That's the effort that wins your ball games right there. Great defensive effort to put the ball in line and take a charge right there, back to back. Yeah. And that's that's her third already here. Yeah, her third. And, and you know, coaches back and forth. And, you know, she gets to decide, you know, when do I take her out? You know, I mean, it's, it's not even halftime yet. So, Garrett, a little floater, a lot of movement. A lot of movement, like in circles. Givens for a three ball from college rank outside to the near end. Baseline, gets around her defender, but see she was out of position. Loose ball goes into the hands of Sterling on the rebound. So a missed opportunity for Chattanooga to try to extend their lead. Spence trying to split the defenders. Loose ball stolen, then re-stolen back. Chattanooga, there's your hustle. Coming back down on the other end. Gibbons. Oh, they're going to say travel before she took the step into the lane. Halfway through this second quarter, what an ugly second quarter. It was 11-11 tie ball game, and it just still stays after a half a quarter is played. Only one bucket's gone in. So what kind of hustle is that? Group substitution here for the Lady Tigers. So don't go anywhere. This one's far from being over. Working that ball down, but I'll tell you what, Chattanooga has disrupted what Sterling likes to do. Really good game plan coming in. Let's see if that continues for four quarters. Loose ball, throwing there a lot of elbows around, and there's a whistle called on the floor. With the hold. That'll send the lead Tigers to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that's going to be Castle. It's going to be her first. Hillary Communications Charity Stripe free throw sponsorship on the one and one misses. Loose ball, trying to save that. Stolen. Restolen by Chattanooga. Loose ball again. Now Sterling dies for it as she saves it. Goes back into a Sterling Tigers hand. What hustle on the floor. Back out. Oh, and then a, a deflected three ball opportunity. And then finally with a whistle and a push underneath. Wow, a lot of action underneath there. That'll send Manzel to the line. I believe Manzel to the line. Yep, shooting a one and one. It's going to be a foul on Wyatt. That's going to be her first. 
Kinley to the line. Hillary Communications free throw. Up, back irons, no good. Still a 13-11 contest, like I said. Only one bucket scored in over a half, a quarter to play, and a throw away. 11-11 after one, and it's just 13-11 with 3.18 left to go in the second. Both teams really fighting this out here in the county tournament. A little give and go, and Mansell finds that outside outlet on the far end of the court. She throws that one up, bounces around, rebound, and a whistle on the floor, and we're shooting two. As both teams have had multiple opportunities here at the free throw line in the second quarter, just can't get comfortable from the strike tonight. So here we go again. There it is. Just hits the front rim, back off the glass, and out. Second shot coming up to try to bring this within one. Still misses. And this score is still deadlock at 13 to 11. Three minutes to go before the half. Fisher. Back over here to Castle. Three ball, she had that. Oh, and she, the bank is open. A Walters co-op three. Makes a little separation right there to give Chatty a 16 to 11 lead. And there it is. Another opportunity, a position. This is a really defensively smart, well-coached Chattanooga team. Yes. Because Clift is going to pick up her first. Three ball on the way. Back iron's no good. Nobody underneath for the rebound. Sterling with the rebound. Chatty with the lead. Up by five with 2.12 left to go. Thrown around. Chattanooga with an easy layup coming up. Up and in. And a timeout on the floor. A run for the Chattanooga Lady Warriors. They lead 18-11 with 2.01 left to go before the half. We'll take a timeout and be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Coast Technology Group helps you feel safe and secure utilizing simple, reliable technology. Allow our team of experts to help you design the right system with high-definition surveillance cameras, cutting-edge smart alarm systems, and thoughtfully designed access control for your home or business. Work, sleep, and play with confidence, knowing CTG is your technology partner. Back to action after the timeout call. Got a good one here. Drilled the three ball there. Just like that. Get that Hart Walters co op three ball. Cut that lead. Make it a four-point contest, 18 to 14. Oh, back door, and then you catch yourself napping. As it's always said, basketball is a game of runs, and come out. And with that's a why you call timeout, just like that. You were down, and now you're back within a bucket, 18 to 16, with 121 left to go before the half. It was an 11-11 contest after one. Will it be tied going into halftime? That's the way both these teams are playing. Ryan Ball perimeter, she fakes the three, goes, splits the defenders, goes up hard in the lane, no good, loose ball on the floor, still no decision, and there is a jump ball call. And the possession arrow going back the other way. So Sterling 
Substitution by Chatty. Chattanooga leads by a bucket, 18 to 16. Winner to try to advance to the finals to face Walters on Saturday at 6.30. We'll have that here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. 52 seconds. Oh, and then she goes just a steal because it's right in the lane. Chattanooga in a fast break opportunity. Puts the ball up, kind of inerrant. Gibbons has to save it. Back out to the top of the perimeter. Down underneath. Low ball. Up and in for two is good. And they get that empty basket. Four-point lead. 20-16 to 16 with the final 30 seconds left to go. Trap and a double team at the line. Underneath. Oh, and then strip away, and that was good. Went out of bounds, but last touched by Mansell. So Chatty will have the opportunity with the lead, with the ball, with 22 seconds left to go. Four-point lead. Going to slow that down, play for the last shot. She'll cross the timeline with 13. Bounce pass with nine seconds left to go. She says, hey, if I'm going to be wide open, I'm going to take it. Turnaround jumper is no good. Sterling with the opportunity. Loose ball on the floor with one second. Will she? Oh, it's before she didn't know it. Bucket is no good. Had that opportunity at a free steal layup, but it is a Chattanooga four-point lead at the half. 20-16. 20-16. to 16. We'll be back with second half action right after this. You're watching the Comanche County Basketball Tournament live right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. We come from different backgrounds with diverse interests and unique learning styles. Finding classes that fit your individual needs isn't a challenge at Cameron University. A small campus and dedicated faculty ensures there's always someone close by to guide you on your journey. Your success is our success. Your education is our mission. At Cameron University, you're not a number, you're part of the family. Feet. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. When it comes to your home, you need someone that you can trust to keep it safe and protected for you and your family. Vesta Foundation Solutions is your local, family-owned company that has helped many homeowners fix and protect their homes. Our engineered solutions can take care of all of your foundation repair, basement waterproofing, concrete leveling, and dirt crawl space repair needs. We take pride in getting the job done right, and you'll always be protected with up to a 75-year warranty. Contact us today for a free estimate.
We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1950. Goodbye, paperwork. Hello, convenience. Farewell, waiting. Hello, personal service. Catch you later, dreaming. Hello, planning. Buy your dream home, connect with a personal banker, and easily schedule an appointment with digital tools from Arvest Bank. Goodbye limits, hello possibilities. Back to the Great Plains Coliseum. A little shoot around getting ready for a second half action of this one between Chattanooga and Sterling. Chattanooga leads by 4, 20 to 16. Want to thank our fine sponsors to make all of this county tournament possible for you to watch four games on Monday with the girls, four games with the boys on Tuesday, four games tonight with the girls, and four games tomorrow with the boys, and then the finals, 6.30 for the girls, and then the boys to follow for the county tournament champions. First Baptist Church of Fletcher. Brox Industries, Bridges Auction, Walters Bank and Trust, First Baptist Church of Walters, and Heritage Pharmacy. Proud supporters of the Comanche County Basketball Tournament right here live on the Oklahoma Sports Network. So we've got 46 seconds left to go in the remainder of the halftime performance, and then we get into third quarter action. Third quarter is brought to you by... is Arbest Bank. And Arbest Bank is committed to the communities they serve, providing a full range of financial services to both individuals and businesses. Manage your accounts anywhere with online and mobile banking. Member FDIC, Arbest Bank. And as we mentioned earlier, it was really a, the first half it was the tale of two styles of basketball. And there was times where both teams would control the game, where Chattanooga would control it, and it would be back and forth and they were able to outrun the Sterling Tigers. And other times... The Tigers are able to slow it down and feed it inside to Mansell. It'll be interesting to see over these next 16 minutes what style of basketball is going to prevail. Yeah, and, and I, I really think that Sterling had a mission of what they want to do, of who they are, and Chattanooga took that away from them, and they really spoiled out with good ball handling, a lot of steals, a lot of great stuff in transition, and their hustle, hustle on the floor. They really deserve the extra that they have gotten, and they were going to switch into the floors. And Sterling will be on this end. Chattanooga in their all-white. Sterling with their all-dark with gold numbers. 
decent participation for Thursday night basketball. I'm glad you could join us. Chattanooga will start off with the ball. Immediately attack the baseline and the bucket counts and the Chattanooga fans go nuts. So the and the harm and the one to make it 22 and the Hillary communication free throw charity stripe opportunity to try to make it a three point swing up and in. And just like that, Chattanooga makes a statement to start second half action. Sterling set this one up. Very contested though with Chattanooga. Oh yeah, and there's a blocking foul. She was moving with her and she understands, but you know, yes, we have the aggressiveness that you play. That's gonna be on Timber Gibbons and that's gonna be her third. Almost stolen, no whistle for any contact. Down underneath, three ball on the way. Opportunity hits the front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Chattanooga. Contested by Sterling and a travel is called. She moved her feet, didn't get the help that she needed. There's a halftime adjustment. Haven't really seen Sterling go into that full court trap press yet tonight. Saw him go into it right there. One of many halftime adjustments we will come to see, I'm sure. An open look missed Chattanooga with the rebound and Castle. Over to Timber Gibbons. Gibbons. Down underneath, up, and there it is. Up off the glass for two is good. To extend that lead, 25 to 16. Loose ball thrown away, and that's going to go the other way. So Chattanooga with another opportunity. If they can get this into points, it's really going to put Sterling behind the eight ball. And to add on to what you mentioned, this is just that trap, that full court style of play is not Sterling style of play. And Chattanooga's taking that identity away from them tonight. Loose ball, going to dive for it. Throws that into the hands of a stolen Sterling Tiger ball goes out of bounds, last touched by Chatty. So Sterling will regain possession underneath on the far end of the court with Cliff to inbounds. Three ball from college rank is good. A Walters co-op three ball is good to bring it to 19. So here comes the Sterling Tigers. Chatty, gonna set this one up. A lot of movement underneath. Splits the defenders, goes hard up and in, and she's gonna get fouled on the way in, and she'll go to the line shooting too. For your Hillary Communications free throw and charity strike opportunity. Six minutes to go in just the third quarter. Fourth and final game. A full slate of games that started at 4.30 this afternoon. Glad you could join us through this run. Shot up and good. Touch goes out of bounds. Just to engage. A little stop and floater. Oh, and that's nice. Sinks that right in. To bring it to 21. Five-point lead by Chattanooga with the ball. A lot of rotation. A lot of heavy defense. Going to try to go low post. Turn around, jumper down, on the lane. Strike for it and a hold coming back down.
It's going to be a foul on Chatty. On Castle, it's going to be her second, team second. Crosses and gets bound up. Take your pick. That's going to be on Rayleigh Garrett. That's going to be her second. It's going to be the team third. Ball goes sailing out of bounds. Floater. And another whistle. This time it's on Garrett. That's going to be her third. That's so when you play that aggressive like that. Let's that one sail. And that's going to hit on the backboard for out of bounds. Burns will take it down with a chatty lead with 440 left to go here in the third. Working our way down to the halfway point of halfway through this quarter. Almost stolen from behind, puts it up high off the glass. A rebound and a jump ball is called coming down. Possession arrow will go back to Sterling. And Chatty is just gonna, they're going to be really contested. Double team trap there at the line. Loose ball and a hold and a call there. Chattanooga really picking up their fouls. They're up to five now. Two more to get into the bonus for Sterling. Sterling with only two. And that's Castle's third. I think they're going to do or die and play like that. They're not going to stop. Little bounce, get the shooter's bounce with Clift. To bring it within three. 4.03 left to go here in the third quarter. And in such a tight ball game, the Lady Tigers would definitely take those extra trips to the free throw line. Wyatt will check out of the ball game. Back up top to Burns. Going back to that circle motion almost. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's fluid too. I mean, they got it down. They practice this a lot because everybody's got to be at the right spot when they do that. Because they're really almost thrown to a spot because they know that someone's going to be right there. Highs that three, backs away from it, burns, looks for the opportunity, drives, little dish out, back outside, another one, opportunity, 333, oh, and then there is going to be a block. Floating around. That's going to be picked up on. on Clift. That's going to be her second. Three point contest, 26-23 with three and a half to go here in the third quarter. Full court press and trap with Chattanooga. Splits the defenders, has to get across the timeline. Outside from the far end, give and go underneath. Up off the glass for two is good. And we're within a one-bucket lead of Chattanooga, which went on a run. And now Sterling is answered right back. She goes up strong to the hoop and is fouled, and she'll go to the line shooting too. Your Hillary Communications charity stripe and free throw opportunity, providing ultra-fast broadband digital cable telephone service to thousands of customers across Oklahoma. Back iron's no good, so Chattanooga trying to get something on the scoreboard from the free throw line. 
Nothing doing. Still a one-point game. Anyone's contest. Foul trouble is going to be interesting. Got, we got a couple of them with three right now. But second shot is good, though. Making it count back up to a one-bucket lead. 27-25 with 3.07 left to go. Little floater going strong to the hoop. Stolen. Coming back down the other way. Oh, and then a steal. Sterling back with the other way. Gets the Chattanooga pass deflected and stolen, and then there is a foul. Also, that I mentioned, a great job to stop her momentum and not travel there as well after the steal. Banging against Spence. So what would get you? There are 16 fouls now with Chatty. And Wolf picks up her first. In danger of sending to the Tigers of the free throw line early here in the second half. Yeah. Stops and pops, no good. Rebound, Chatty. Oh, she walked, so she took an extra step. As Wolf, the freshman, wasn't able to regain her feet, and she'll go out. Sterling with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Spin move, loose ball, picked up, and there is a foul on the back end as she gets the, she gets the control. But with the hold is going to be Clift. That's going to be her third. And they picked up their fifth team foul. So now two away of putting Chattanooga in. Throws that one up on a wing and a prayer. And then she didn't see the backboard. Hit the rim. Rebounded by Sterling with 2.08 left to go here in the third. Cross pass, wide open, shot no good by Alexander. Rebound by Chattanooga, disrupted, stolen. Spence up and in. No, it's not Spence. Take that back. That's Cliff. Cliff gets it up, and we are all tied up at 27 apiece. Rip stolen opportunity coming back down the other end. Three ball on the way, no good. Loose ball picked up. Chattanooga with an opportunity with a two on one. She goes coast to coast and the ball gets stuffed right there on the side of the rim. Unfortunate. Had that layup opportunity. Oh, what a play from the referee right there. Man, a fast break opportunity and you jam it. We had one earlier that was like that. Got to love the athleticism from our official here tonight. <laughs> We're going to have a conversation here as the head coach for the Sterling Tigers and their bookkeeper walked over to the table. Whatever her case was did not get heard. So, Chattanooga will remain with the possession at the top of the key. Oh, try to get inside the lane, deflected, but then Chattanooga picks it back up with 118 left to go in the third. All tied up at 27 apiece. Winner advances to the final to take on Walters on Saturday. Nope, that is going to be a whistle. On the floor for the foul. And the foul on the floor. As that will now put both teams on the brink. Yeah, of, of putting the either one in at bonus, both with six. The next one, we're going to the line with a buck eight left to go. Fight for it. Underneath, nice. Splits the defenders up and in. And the bucket counts. So Chattanooga with the harm and the foul to get the two point. And now the one point. Extension to make it a three-point swing. So they go up by a bucket, 29-27, with the extra at the line coming up. Your Hillary Communications, free throw. Bending the knees, up, back irons, no good. 
Rebounded by Sterling, so it's just a one bucket lead, 29-27, with 56 seconds left to go here in the third. Crosses the timeline, and she will get a charge called, and that's going to be her fourth. She's had three charging calls. And it, she will, is Spence, and that's going to be her fourth. And three of them have been charges. She will be taking a trip to the bit. No, yes, she will be. 51.6 seconds left to go. And she's a good ball handler. She's going to be needed. But she's been three charging calls of her four personals. Chattanooga underneath, and now another one underneath. It's going to be on Clift. Be a one and one here. Is it going to be her fourth? Yeah, that's her fourth. That is now the second with four yeah. for the Tigers. And if you remember, yeah. Manzo also has three of her own. She's going to go to the Hillary free throw line. All quiet gymnasium here in the Coliseum. Misses back irons, no good. Still a one bucket lead with 36 seconds left to go. Chattanooga with the steal. Looking for an opportunity and not let with 31 seconds left to go. Inside the lane, put out. Baseline, drives, back up top, perimeter, three ball on the way, no good. But the rebound, put back up, is good. And just like that, Chattanooga on a run, 31-27 with 16 seconds left to go. And an inerrant pass, no call, stripped and stolen. Chattanooga with 10 seconds left to go, stolen by Sterling, coming back the other way, puts it up, and they're going to say no, she took a step. Traveling is called. So what in a... Change of events. And a timeout is called? No. There we go. We're going to say ball inbounds. Dunner here with six seconds left to go. Chattanooga crosses the timeline with three. Down to two. She goes coast to coast, up and off the rim, and that's going to end it. 31-27 after three quarters of play. We'll have the final eight minutes, the final fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. to showing your loved ones you care. You need the best. A better design, flowers and gifts is under new ownership. And we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran owned company. Click, call or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. Welcome back here to the Great Plains Coliseum. Fourth and final period coming up. Chattanooga leads 31 to 27. An exciting, thrilling contest. And our fourth quarter is brought to you by the East Side Pharmacy. Convenient location and a convenient drive-through. East Side Pharmacy, you can count on personal attention, provided by their caring professional staff. Expertly trained pharmacists and friendly staff pride themselves on making sure your pharmacy experience exceeds expectations. Visit us today. Experience the East Side Pharmacy difference, 3612 Southeast Lee Boulevard in Lawton. Welcome to the fourth and final period. Going to be an exciting one on this one. Back and forth, this is gone. As soon as Chatty gets a run, Sterling comes right back with a steal. Chattanooga with the ball, with the lead. 7.33 just underway in the fourth quarter. Chattanooga tries to force that way in, and I think Mansell's going to pick up one. Just called out of bounds off the deflection. Okay, thank you. Look to go up top. Spread that around from the outside corner. Shields a three. I'll take it. Opportunity missed on the other end. Forcing it with the trap there at 
A double team. Goes baseline. Up and bounces once, twice. Gets the deflection, rebound on the floor, and there is a jump ball called. And the possession arrow will go over to Chatty. So Chattanooga with the ball. 31-27, a long way to go in this one with 7.04 left to go here in the fourth. We'll be back in action with the four ball games for the boys tomorrow starting at 4.30. You can join us here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Miss any of the action, you can watch all of these on demand about an hour or so after the broadcast is finished. Watch us on Facebook, on YouTube Live. Clock continues to roll. A little tipped, but gets into the hands of Chattanooga. There's a fight for it and a hold. And Sterling's going to be called with trying to pick the pocket. And that'll now be in the double bonus. Double bonus. And that's her fifth. So she is fouled out of the contest. Is Emma Nunley. Nunley, the senior, will call it a night. And have to root from the bench. You also got to be worried. You got one with three, one with four, and another with four on the bench for the Lady Tigers tonight. So Hillary's communication free throw sponsor. Up and missed. Try to extend that lead. Second shot is good. 32-27 with 6.37 left to go. In this contest, winner will take on the Walters Blue Devils for the girls' championship in the county tournament. And Sterling's not going away. She says, we have the experience we know. We've been here. Baseline, chatty. Up, no. Rebound, Sterling. Here comes the Lady Tigers quickly down the floor. That gets tipped out. And you know you got to really watch. You really got to watch Spence because she's got four. But now we've got. Castle has got four now. So Hillary Communications Charity Stripe. Back iron's no good. The ultra fast broadband digital cable from Hillary Communications. That outside perimeter, and they, they want to try to go down, but you know what? That, that 2 3 zone just really clogs things up. Don't have any room, much room at all down underneath. So you're going to have to sail it outside. Three ball look, no good, but Sterling gets the rebound. Spence. And she's going to run out of real estate, and it goes out of bounds. Timeout is, Time is called by Sterling. That'll be a, a full timeout. Second. So they'll take a timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoma. Deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth. Helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. So back to action. 32-29, your score with 5.30 left to go. It's fourth and final period. Missed opportunity. Chattanooga on the rebound. Just a throw away and a loose ball picked up. And it's last touched by Chattanooga. 
And so Sterling will get the ball. Sterling playing scrappy, looking to set up a rematch of last year's championship game with Walters. Walters. Yeah. The right to fight. But Chattanooga's trying to do everything they can to say, we want to be a part of that dance. Bounces around Sterling with a put back up and up and in good. And that's how you do it. And we're back to a one-point ball game. 32-31. Let's that one sail. No good. And no one underneath for the rebound. And here comes the Sterling Lady Tigers. And she gets pushed out of bounds. She likes to hug that corner, and they'll get right on her. And then she takes a step in that. You see her being definitely more careful than the sideline. With her third, with her now, three charging fouls, she three charging fouls, and this time she, but she gets one, and she comes right back over here for the Hillary. Ooh, runs in and out. Don't you hate those? They just roll right out. That one opportunity with a miss. Chattanooga with a one-point lead. Four and a half to go. Fakes that nice little move. Outside dish over to Burns. Over to Gibbons. Back up top, three ball on the way. Misses the mark, hits the front of the rim, and no. Had the look, opportunity. Here comes Sterling, two on one. Fast break, stops, pops, gets the roll out. Does not fall, and into the hands of Chattanooga. Halfway through the fourth and final period, unless there's OT, 32 to 31. 3.56 left to go. And a whistle and a foul. It's Clifton. That's it. I think that's her fifth. Yeah, Clift that is, is gone. That's why she would look really frustrated. I see that. So Clift is gone. Spence is close because she's got four. Manzel has three as well. You got a long way to go in this one. And the Hillary Communications free throw opportunity. Extends Chatty's lead now by just a bucket. Trying to make it a three-point lead and miss the second opportunity at the charity stripe with 3.47 left to go. Steal, Chattanooga. Spence has got to be careful. Puts it up, and she's going to be fouled on the way in. I don't think it's Spence, though. I think it's the trail. It we'll is. find it is. And so I know she was thinking, she heard that whistle, and she thought the worst. <laughs> and Timber Gibbons is going to go to the line for the Hillary Communications. Charity Stripe in the free throw. Opportunity up. Hits the front of the rim. No good. That's one where as the team, you say, no, ref, that foul's on me, not on her. Yeah. Try to keep her in this ball game. Yeah, well, she stays. I said she's got to be careful. She was, tra you know, but the trail was the one that got it. So up and in. So now Chattanooga with that lead by three with 3.37 left to go. Long way to go in this one. Looks for a three. Sterling eyes it, airs, airs it for the Walters. Co-op three ball just like that. And we're all tied up at 34 apiece. What else would you expect in a game like this? 3.17 left to go. Oh, and a steal as she sits right on her front, but then she doesn't look, throws it away to Sterling. Back in opportunity, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. Before the act of shooting. And she'll go to the stripe for a one and one For the Hillary Communications, call 580-529-5000 for thousands of customers across Oklahoma taking advantage of the ultra-fast broadband digital cable at Hillary Communications. All tied up at 34 apiece. Sterling trying to go up by one. As Chattanooga is really led in the second half. Back irons and then in. What a hop that was. Sterling, fight, fight, tooth and nail. And so is Chattanooga. This one rattles in and out. Chattanooga. Quickly down the floor at the three-minute mark left to go here in this fourth quarter. 
Back up top. Perimeter. Goes baseline, bounce pass. Oh, and then she puts it up just a wing and a prayer as Burns had to throw that off balance, but they get the rebound and another opportunity to set up. Burns is all alone. She wants it. Double teamed. Baseline, puts it up, deflected, and then that is rejected by Mansell by Sterling. The ball hawks on both sides of this courts. Inside to Mansell, deflected and stolen away by Timber Gibbons. Little dish out to Burns. Oh, and then you throw an in and error pass, but. Referee saved that one. Almost stayed in bounds, but no one really reacted once the referee batted in bounds. Sterling with a one point lead with 2.11 left to go. A lot of people glued to this one. Winner will advance to take on Walters in the championship game on Saturday at 6.30. You can catch that here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Down to 2.08 here in the county tournament and the fourth and final of the four-game girl stretch. Opportunity of the rebound goes to coast to coast all the way up and in. And Chattanooga now regains the lead. Exchanging bucket to bucket, 36 to 35. Chattanooga with an opportunity of the rebound, and they're going to call a timeout or? Yep, timeout. Timeout. Called, called that just in time. Full. They'll take it. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Dr. Todd Bridges. And I'm Dr. Nathan Buckner. Did you know our dental practice is one of only 6% of practices in the United States that provide care from an all-digital platform? We fabricate crowns, bridges, and place implants with advanced digital technology. If you want to be part of this digital revolution in dental care, call us today at 248-6700 or visit our website at bridgesandbucknerdentistry.com. We look forward to providing you with exceptional dental care. All right, we got a fun one here. For those who have stayed glued to this one, back and forth we go. Chattanooga with a one-point lead, 36 to 35, with 145 left to go in regulation. Your Eastside Pharmacy fourth quarter. Glad you could join us, along with JW DeSilver, myself, Eric Sharon. And a stretch of great ball games. Winner to advance to the finals of the county tournament. A lot of pride and a lot of hustle by both these girls' teams. They really deserve all that you're seeing today. Oh, and then a steal by Sterling. Opportunity comes on a three-on-one. Back over him, we're going to say Givens is going to get the foul, and she's going to shoot two. So Timber Gibbons stands in front. All she can do is just take it. She's got her fourth. So she's on the verge of fouling out. Spence over there for Sterling with four. Bend of the knees up and in. Gibbons will come out of the game. So we're all tied up at 36 apiece. And now Sterling goes up by one. With 117 left to go, clock will be the factor. Don't necessarily, you could play for the last shot if that's an opportunity. But you're behind with a three ball look, no good. Rebound, defense on the floor, puts it up, and a timeout is called by Chattanooga. Just in time. Because otherwise, it would be a loose opportunity. We'll keep it here with a buck two left to go in this fourth and final period. So, JW, what do you do here? I mean, you know, you, you got to, you can't really, I don't think you play for the last shot necessarily because you're behind. Uh, I think that it's important for you to be aggressive to get the bucket because they're so hard to come by. I think you get that. You play good defense, smart defense, because you're going to get another trip down the floor, perhaps. You so, gotta, you got to preach the smart shot here. You don't got to well, force it. We got a minute yeah, and, left. And Sterling's not going to let you take a minute off the clock, no. you know, even with a one-point lead, and then play for the last shot to try to win it. 
yeah, necessarily the smart shot. Don't stall it, but you can wait. Make sure we get a good shot here with a minute left. Yes, to go. it's it's got the placement has got to be very smart. It's got to be a smart play. Can't be, uh, you know, because you got plenty of time and opportunity. Both teams in the double bonus. Look for a little outlet. Gibbons will get it underneath. 59 seconds left to go in between the two splits of defenders. Bucket counts. And the harm. And the bench goes wild. Just like that. Chattanooga gets the bucket to count. 38 to go up by one. That's why we say a smart move. And the Hillary communications, charity stripe, and free throw line to try to make it three. And that's where Falto comes into play. Manziel kind of playing a little bit of it's almost scared defense there. I want to pick up another foul. And they have put them under desperation. Now with a bucket to tie. With 54 seconds left to go. Sterling. Spence splits the defenders. Outside. Oh, and they're banging. They're and there's going to be push because Mansell was the low post down below. And they were not going to let her get the shot. They're going to try to make her earn it. From the charity stripe. From the Hillary. Communications free throw line. Here we go. Try to bring it within one and does. And I'm okay with that foul if I'm a coach. If you get Mansell the ball down low, it's been almost a guaranteed bucket tonight. Well, the key right here to try to tie this ball game at the free throw and does. We're all tied up and a timeout is called by Sterling. They'll take it, we'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. growing and changing to serve you better. Until then, we're making room and reducing inventory. During our Billingsley Hyundai construction sale, expanding to serve you better. That's the Billingsley way. All right, back here at the Great Plains Coliseum. What a good game this has been. You can go watch this on Demand, you can watch it on YouTube and on Facebook. What a great, great contest this has been in the late night going. After 10 o'clock at night on a Thursday night, it's all tied up at 39 apiece. Sterling called the timeout. Chattanooga with the ball and an opportunity to try to go ahead. We'll catch this last with the 44 seconds left to go, unless we go into overtime. 38 to go. Outside perimeter, look for the smart shot. It's got to make it fall down to 32 seconds. No panic because it's a tie ball game. Worst case scenario, you go into overtime. Chattanooga's going to make them play defense here. And, and he does do. a loose ball, a dive for it. Chattanooga picks it up with 19 seconds left to go. And another timeout is called by Chatty. Full. And it's a full timeout. We'll take it with him. We'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. growing and changing to serve you better. Until then, we're making room and reducing inventory. During our Billingsley Hyundai construction sale, expanding to serve you better. That's the Billingsley way. The future is here at Comanche County Memorial Hospital with the first and only Da Vinci surgical robot. The expertise of our compassionate surgeons combined with this leading technology allows for smaller incisions and a quicker recovery with increased accuracy for a number of surgical needs. Get back into your life's routine faster. Your community hospital, our family caring for yours. Well, we got to set the scene is there was going to be an opportunity, a, a possible steal, but Chattanooga still Rallies it up. We're all tied up at 39 apiece with 18.7 seconds left to go. And inbounds Chattanooga from midcourt. Quickly down to 17 seconds. They don't really have to just make a smart play or you're playing for OT. It's a steal by Spence. Down with nine seconds left to go. She has to be careful. It's tipped away. Ball throws out and it's going to be last touched by Chattanooga. So Sterling will have the ball with 5.3 seconds left to go. I'm out because Spence is, yep, Spence is a little banged up on the floor over there. 
Looks like she's cramping. She has to, cramps, I think. Yeah, so trying we'll, to stretch out the cramps. I'm just going to keep that here. Now, will she have to – she'll have to go out, right? It, not if a timeout was called. Okay. I believe the – yes, the Sterling coach, I believe, has called a timeout. Okay, so she has. Okay. It's going to be a full timeout. Full timeout on the floor. Okay, we'll take it with, and we'll be back right after this on the Oklahoma Sports Network. I'm flying. I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, whether I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know. I'm an American Airman, kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown, Jr. Come join us. Well, we've had this last setup, I don't know how many times here in the fourth quarter with timeouts called 39-39 with 5.3 seconds left to go. Either we're playing overtime or it's going to be a win by Sterling right here. Going to inbounds. A lot of shuffling down underneath. Want to go low post, turn around, jumper is good. Just like that, and a timeout is called by Chatty with 2.2 seconds. What did I say about confidence with Sterling and what they did do and did not go away, and they're now up 41 to 39. And we'll keep it here, but I'll tell you what. I mean, that last possession by Chattanooga, they're going to go over it and over it. They played their hearts out. Not that they can't win it, but they have put themselves behind. But Sterling with the confidence, Sterling that they've been there. They know they, this scene. They didn't get rattled, even though we're down quite a bit at times. I mean, not down quite a bit, but I mean, not playing their style in that first half and then having – having no score for the longest time in the second because it was tied 11-11 after one. And then in the second quarter, it's like no one could score. And so they both were kind of feeling each other out and, and hats off. You, you hate to even say, man, how can you declare a winner uh, with this game so much? But, you know, you got to dial it up. The, the ball has got to be thrown at least a half court, you know, and the, and the, and the clock won't start until the ball's touched. So you got to rifle one in. And then you know, hopefully hope for the best, but Sterling, it's, it's a wing and a prayer. Sterling, they're going to come out in a press to not allow that roll. Right. Well, yeah. There's no way you want to do that because you know you you force them to throw a half court pass to the mid court and then a heave ho and up and in. And and what a shot from Mansell right there. She has been huge all night for the Tigers. So much confidence on that turnaround jump shot right there to win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, experience gets you a lot. Tournaments like this, what a battle this has been. They'll be talking about this one. Chattanooga to try to inbounds. Looks back and forth. She has only five seconds to get that across. She may have it. There is a five-second count. It was too much, and that will be enough. Just be could not find. You have done. to get a design play, and unfortunately, that just didn't work out for Chatty. There's going to be an official's timeout. Well, they're going to put time on the clock because there shouldn't have been any. There's 1.9, and it really is 2.2. So they'll put that back up because if it was a five-second count, it never got in, so the, the clock should have never started. So it really needs to be 2.2, and there it is. So 2.2 gets back put on the board, and now all Sterling has to do is just throw that long, and then that's going to be travel. a foul. Oh, a travel call. So but it's only one second, so now you're back to the same thing. You've got to be able to uh, – I don't even know catch, shoot, and shore, score. It's got to be almost a full court. Full court. I would not be surprised to watch number three try and, try and set a pick. Yeah, you got to go. The ball is up, but it comes up short. Chatty falls short to Sterling. They crowd it up. Sterling with an incredible win, almost a come from behind. They advance 41 to 39, and they will take on Walters for the championship at 6:30. What a contest of four games! What a wow. ball game! What, what a, ball a ball game, game to go back and watch. But my hats off to Chattanooga and Sterling for a great fight. And just a little note: that three-pointer was going to count. 
Yes. He put the three oh, in the I air know. to count I know. it. I know. I know. If she would have sat a little bit more, that would have been something we could have saved, and you would have had a TikTok forever. But anyway, for JW, for myself, Eric Sharon, bidding you a pleasant good evening. Guys, we'll be back again tomorrow at 4.30 for a start of four extra games. You've been watching a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Good night, everyone. <laughs>